I'm focused. I've been watching for the omens. I've been listening to everything you said. It's been running through my head, locked and loaded. I got the feeling that you know it. Yeah, I've only just begun. I won't stop until it's done. Till you're broken. The group split into two, one subterranean, the orc and the horseman, in a five kilometer long tunnel under the town slowly filling with a gas that corrodes your ability to act and think. Melion and Cornell above, scouting uh, and exiting from a rundown apothecary, you manage to enter the crags the more prestigious part of town and more well guarded and in the later hours of the night your forms are able to hide amongst the many shadows while only the main roads towards the front of the gate and towards the northern part of the barracks is lit a single main road which at some point you would have crossed uh, while underneath the cart that you came in with the main road being the prominent and most visible display of light which you are all able to keep you two are able to keep tally of while you move but ahead of you the signs oh no i've missed a bunch uh the the pathway towards the main gate you know is well lit and the area you're walking beside is well lit in this richer part of the town uh while the rest of the town seems to be swallowed by a thick cloud by by the thick clouded sky and a lack of light there is the strong smell of burning, of wicks, of candles, and as you walk between the alleyways on the wealthier district, flags and banners of the former week's festival day of grazing still adorns the barely illuminated side, side streets. While no sign of celebration is was visible in the flocks, it appears that the side the sides of the town is just too lazy to take down their decorations one week after. But ahead of you, the two of you, the illuminated lights of the main roads barely give you the idea and scale of the size of the building. You correlate to being the church, but it is next to the gate that you carefully underneath the cart moved past. So you didn't actually ever see the details of this church because you went outwards via cart. So you are maybe in, in total from this church outwards north, sorry, westward, because that's the direction the church is pointing. Westward, there are four blocks, four rows of buildings, each progressively getting more and more wealthy and larger. And then this way, to the north, there are three blocks, and then followed by a large military walled off corner of the wall. Okay, you hear something? This is the Quill Church, right? This is seemingly the Quill Church, yes. And from the only visible sign you have of the church is the fact that the center is a massive tall arch, and that from these two sides here are tall, 60 foot tall pillared points, uh, cones, reverse cones. Church of the right to the point. Hmm. I grabbed the wrong notebook. Oh. Well, it fucking needs it anyway. It's okay. You didn't need to remember the name. You heard 30 seconds. Yeah, well, I'm sure he wrote it all down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sure you'll figure it out. Okay. Sorry, I don't know why we're here either. So you're roughly two blocks, two rows of buildings away from the main main thoroughfare, which appears to be at the front end of this church, if not a block away from it. The two of you up top, 
in which direction do you move? Now you knew that the gates were guarded, but the, the gates are so... Any windows on the big spire? Uh, no, but at the front half of the building where you see the doors are, one of them is heavily blocked by trees, but you can see tall, pointed, tri- triangular shapes, but tall, tall pyramidal shaped uh, glass stained windows at the front. And they have various depictions of fire, though it is hard to see. There is, there is visibly no illumination on the inside from the angle that you stand, but you notice the, at least of the church, uh, and the cart traffic at this point of night seems to be much less the the door to the front gate of the church appears ajar and the door doesn't necessarily look locked but visibly it's hard to tell there is stained glass this is very obviously a church but we got a dog there to find i think you heard the, yeah, the last person because <clears throat> everybody else is gone who is helping the people that are sick? And that you heard it was this Dalius Hildevane, Doctor Dalius mm-hmm. Hildevane. So the, the front door is open. The front gates <coughs> yeah. appears ajar, like like someone has either entered with in a hurry, not closed, or left in a hurry, not closed, and then so you approach and. Uh. Oh, sorry, yeah. So Dalius Hildevane was the name on the gravestone. Where Leonard Dr. Hildevane? Dalius Hildevane was the name of the gravestone where all of the snake graves were yeah. at the other side of town. Where the Dr. Hildevane. Doctor, yeah, you heard. You even heard Dalius Hildevane. Like, this this book um, not, not was aware of his full title. Dalius. Well, I mean, it could be the same guy, it could be dead. Who knows? Anyway, the thing's open. Let's go in. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. The uh, there are guards kind of patrolling the main street here in a wider sense, but if you're keeping, like, uh, you you would have to pass by some of the brighter areas. So just both of you, roll me just stealth checks, just entering entering the gate of this area, but also just crossing the street to get there. So, um, stale. Don't run. Stale you can you can even take forward. the time if uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, if you you're can Stealth, 25. 25 and 21. That is good. We're really good at stealth, guys. <laughs> good at something. Okay. And uh, who's smarter, Cornell or Melior? Hey. Make sure you duck. Yes, yes. You're good. Beautiful. <clears throat> uh, the human is smarter than you, so I will just say for Cornell, you heard. Of, you heard, uh, Madame Gourmont. Madame Gourmont. That was the other woman who was said to be the librarian of this church, which said to have been given a bookshelf by the notary, the place you came, the bindery. And. And was she um. Nah, don't worry about it. Yeah, there wasn't. There, I don't think there was much description on her at all. Yeah. But, but. Uh, known that she ha- is heavily invested, and even while the priests had left, she remained, yeah. along with the doctor. So Cornell, yeah. if we run into somebody, what's our story? Oh, um, let's say that I'm a sick homeless man looking for medical attention, and your gracious noble bless in my presence. Or we just say we worship to well or for church. Um, as you uh, both approach, give me both perception checks. Let's do double rolls. You do yeah, really well. Your first. 24. 24. Fuck. Some of them. Uh, 23. <laughs> oh my god. High performance off the bat. That's good for you. Hence, but. The moment you guys start conversing, there is noise at the far end, seemingly echoed by the inside of the built of the of the Dude, church. There's noise at the far end. You swear, echoed. you swear, you hear just raised voices, like a like a quick yelling match. Sounds like a fight, maybe. 
It is brief. And it cuts the moon. Some sort of quarrel. Let's just be pleasurable. Be a nice version of ourselves. And, and you see and you see the front door is unlocked. And by that you can see that there are there is a knocker. Like a like on both the front areas of this door there is a knocker and where you can see the knocker is slightly raised, like it has, it's been worn heavily and kind of naturally folds out a bit, the door is pushed inward slightly, like there is a two inch or so space, and it is open. All right. I'll push it open just a few minutes. No, I mean, we could just say we worship reach below back. Sure. Well, we pilgrims traveling here? Are we from the town? Yeah, we'll say we're pilgrims from um, some place. Come up with the place before. That's just, I don't know. This, you're the captain, you know it. I'm trying to get you to take some responsibility. This is your mission. Okay. Okay. Right, but they're pilgrims from Saratuni. Saratuni. That's good. Sam, Sam, whatever it's. What did they ask us about the events in Saratuni? Okay, we're from Sam, whatever. The is place. Sam Mora. Uh, yeah, we're from Sam Mora. Looking for some, uh, I don't know, something. <laughs> Figure it out, it's fine. I love a plan that has no thought put in it whatsoever. <laughs> Let's go, push it aside. Push it aside. Uh, I want to, I'm gonna get your minis. Please. I don't, well, I, I didn't mean to put them away. Oh, Let's just do it. Boss fight. Boss fight, oh God. Like, all you need to do is lead into the tunnel so we can blow up the town. We're both gonna step foot in the church and just start burning. <laughs> Ah! I'm go- the boss monster is immediate. <laughs> no, no. It's immune to it's our friends. All right. So here's the toughest decision you will have to make today. Which side do you move around? You guys should split up. Oh. Uh, Which side? Because immediately the foyer is a brick wall. Are we going the same way? You're hearing like natural sounds of books being slid together. Or a bookshelf that's slightly been aged a bit too much. You got this. Uh, oh, yeah, it's good to have yourself up. I am. So I'm going to keep your current stealth rolls, and so that she has no clue of where you are. And that isn't an, until you guys want to make yourself known. But you can look around the corner and get her. Yeah, Ask if she's familiar. Yeah, we're gonna record the map. Yes, we will. I will do at least middle aged, but with a, a fair amount of uh, braiding done up to the top in a type of. Uh, middle aged. Like <sighs> she looks like, if not mid fifties, maybe maybe early sixties. She's got. She's barely hanging on by thread. Maybe a few months left. She's like fully anorexic. She's uh, a, a very bookish person, librarian, as what you can what tell. Does bookish mean? What is that? Uh, like your profile uh, like, no. uh, bookish in the way that she seems to be very effectively moving a large table worth of books, sorting them, moving some off a of, off of bookshelf back onto this table. Bookish in the way that she's carrying a lot of books, but it's a mature, yeah. light brown... Well, we don't want to make assumptions. A, a light brown smile. She's persisting with this type of smiling persona, things. even though she doesn't immediately notice you. Is she knowledgeable? Uh, she seems to be sorting books in effect that would seem like she has some knowledge of what she's touching. Okay. <laughs> whispering fucking 30 feet away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, as you turn the corner, you are almost just immediately horrified. There is one part of the church that you remember, and both of you register this, uh, the person who ran away from town, the person that was conceived of attacking this town, was requested to perform a type of uh, sculpting, as he was known as the sculptor, inside of this major church. So as you bend the corner, you are horrified by a structure that looks to be made of pure amber. It looks almost like it's carved in one piece, and it's horrifying. It is a woman on fire, reaching oh. her hand yeah. out over so, so this entire 
Actually, does it have the big horns? Yep. Mm, that's uncomfortable. Stained red pieces of glass gem attached to that. her head. This was... This doesn't... It's reaching out over the pews and you can see just how like well balanced it is for it to be able to reach that far over. But you can see there's some sort of like a, a crown or some sort of jewel at the base. Some sort of like worshipper's idol or well, what you're aware of. Although even in your town, you had not seen any sort of sculpt. There was, there was sculpts of Tula as a young girl in like a type of bronze statue sort of way. This is the first time, though often she is depicted in fire, this is the first time you're looking at this and saying, this is probably something similar to what the cities hold in her uh, admiration, admonishment. Oh, my, my, my dear, what, what are you doing here? I think she, she only has to hear your exhale of just seeing a massive statue 20 feet tall, looming over you. Um, we're looking for a Madame Gourmand. Oh, that is, that is me. The, the father has headed out of town for the week and, well, we, we, uh, we, we don't have any other practicing Baptists since the apothecary's sudden shift of ownership. You, but you're after me at this time of the night? Is there, is there something wrong? Something we're, I can do for you? Well, we're after you and, um, the, the doctor. Are you, are you after something? Um, well, we are, but... Oh, what are your names? We are, Is there something I can help you find? Humble pilgrims. Pilgrims? Coming oh. from San Maureen. Ah, uh, yes. I, I'm sorry, I am in awe of this statue here of the gracious lady. That I've not seen something of this magnitude before. Yes. Well, uh, I think I think you would. Uh, well, uh, as far as I'm aware, despite the father's agreeance in this sculpt, basically a demon made it for us. As she looks up at it, it still holds in its beauty. He had to have an arm at least twice the size of a normal human to reach that high. Yeah, it's probably all like scaly too. He was, or at least I saw the hanging mm. pre pre attack. Uh, yep, take it. <laughs> you a, are checking. It's a very um, it's a it's a powerful, it's a powerful statue. Oh yes, well, only my recent attempts of the father to. Uh, <laughs> to get him to sculpt something equivalent to Saratuni and to Toulon. Even Kings Bay, I believe, has a statue, if not identical, then very similar. We, we try to hold ourselves as this church and library to a level that is equal to the great libraries of Saratuni and the Cluder Academy, the Cluroda Assemblies pictures. Mm. Where from uh, smaller? Smaller, uh, yes. That's so true. it's seeing anything of this uh, size is just, um, I mean, it's, it's magnificent, honestly. Uh, oh. Yeah, these are like, these are like almost, these are almost pure, these are almost pyramidal diamonds that are placed around her head, but you notice there is 12, or roughly 12, and two predominantly right above where the eye marks would be are larger, as if to represent types of eyes. It's double the amount of things, so maybe not. And that creature was bathed in shadow. This is obviously illuminated by the torchlight. It's a massive amber monolith, perfectly formed. Even the fire along the side seems all interconnected to the main stem. How will I? Uh, only with our recent attempts, we persuaded the father into building these magnificent, as she points to the bookshelves, holders of historical and spiritualism. spiritualism. It's, it's, a, it's a new attempt we have to make the, the, the church more of a community center than just a place of worship. 
in the, uh, obviously I've packed up for the evening. I didn't, I didn't expect. And uh, you're like looking in her way and looking back at that. And you're noticing behind her head is something that she seems adamantly to have her back against, which is just a wreath of mushrooms that look thick, dense and purple in nature that are displayed like they've grown over a mirror and half on a mirror and then half over one of the arches, inner arches. And it is just circular uh, chunk of the wall that is almost, it's perfect. It's a, it's an almost perfect circle, circle spotted with purple mushrooms growing out of the side of stone where there appears to be no other inner growth. Uh, she appears to be avoiding it majorly because it's at the back of the, uh, at the back. Uh, and she keeps you quiet and gives you a moment. Uh, seems to just turn around and place a few more books from the table back onto the back onto the bookshelf in a new so formation. I'll approach her. Uh, look, we're we're passing through, um, so I do apologize. It's late, but mm -hmm. as a, uh, a practitioner of medicine, I was curious of this. Uh, uh, healed everything. Oh well, you know we have we have some lovely children's books. My well, my my daughter loved them. She was quite taken. I was always I always did want to adventure. It was a young aspiration of mine. Deserting. What about um? What about a healed everything? Oh oh, but uh. Dr. Hildervain. Yes, she turns back to the books. Uh, yeah. She like taps along a few covers. She... she pulls out a book. It's uh it it doesn't it has a D in its name, but it is a book on on uh like a, a location. It's discovering information about the lower half of of, of uh, the King's Bay in San Mora, and she says, eh, "But my once my husband died, it was uh, more a matter of how does a lady travel." <laughs> so I've stayed here, mostly lived through the travel books. Lady, there is a wonderful book on Africa if you're interested. What about Doctor Hildervain? Uh, I, I, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, yes, we we have quite quite the collection here, as you see. Make a sense motive. I'm gonna finish my prayer and get up. Uh, Cornell's getting frustrated, but you don't actually understand what the problem is. The conversation, at least, if you're not paying attention, if you were, make a perception check. Eighteen. Eighteen. You're hearing the the crackling of fire sconces yeah, behind I'm you. I'm praying to a god that mm -hmm. I'm not really But there is there is some fire like sounds in the background that is kind of muffling what she says. 19? What do you say? Eighteen. Eighteen and, and nineteen for perception. Uh, I mean, her expression is off. For a normal evening, you see as she looks at you. She does well to cover up her sudden st stiff and fright-filled expression. She covers it, like it momentarily makes itself known as you seemingly push at her. Uh, but she gently glides to back towards you, or more like around you. She, she moves so that you're no longer facing the wreath of mushrooms behind her, but are facing the pile of books on the table, or she just rotates around your, your field of view. Quietly, quickly, you hear her voice ever so gently shakes. I, I think it is, it is about time that you, you left. It is about time that, that I pack up for the evening and make my, make my way out. I think I'll, I'll, we'll be open at 5 a.m. You're more than welcome to come back in six hours to peruse the stacks. Will you answer my questions in six hours? <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm so tired. I'll, you... I'll draw my gun. <sighs> Place it to her forehead. <laughs> you turn around I'll just, as this happens. I'll just look back at Melion and say, Yeah, this bitch broke. No, please. You have, you have a gun to her face. No, no, please. Wait a second. I think it's I think it's time for you to leave. This is this is not a good place for you. This is not a good place. She's not afraid of you. 
Mm. Her facial expression is panicked as crap, but she isn't f afraid of, in fact, she's w willingly moving with like the motion of your gun to stay at her center chest. She's not willing to leave that part, but she also doesn't seem like she wouldn't, she, there's no weapons on her. All right. Uh, you seem uh, <clears throat> like of a stoic disposition based on Crabs, the fact like that six I or seven books. threaten you. As I, I just have a question. Is it the statue or is it the mirror? The mirror, almost fully covered in like this moss, but then growing on the moss is these purple mushrooms that form half of the mirror in a circle. Um, this is not a good place for you, please. Please leave. Is there... I would like you to go, Can please. I see any doorway leading somewhere else? Or maybe like a basement door? Uh, yeah, in the direction you're looking, there... There's no... There's no actual doorway. There is just... There is just where the bookshelf is, and now where Cornell and her are, they're basically having a conversation right here. You can see next to where that mushroom is, there is a single side cut chamber, but that's it. Uh... But in some ways, she seems to be, and you're looking at it from an outside perspective, she seems to be trying to get Cornell's attention to facing the doorway, facing the way to leave. Um, this, this is, a, this is maybe not the time for you to be here at this time of the night and big days to come. She looks at your leg manacle and seems to just not even shift expression from that. More fearful of when you're putting the gun to her face. So what's the, um, what are the big days come? Because we might be in town for a while. Oh, you know, there is, uh, I, I believe they were, uh, they, they, they were, there are works to bring back some of the predators that have been stalking this town. I believe we've got a... You're trying to bring them back. Mm, one, one, uh, there's some monstrous uh, people. I think there's a a horse monster. Mm, sounds scary. Uh, and I believe they all headed north. But then, of course, so did the, the hounds. So the king's hounds were sent that way. And, and hopefully they've brought back some of the... Uh, and, uh, and, uh, What's the deal with the mirror? She looks back at it. Looks back at you. I mean, it's an odd decoration. Oh, the, the father liked to look at. Um, I can't. So, you, I, I think I think you asked a good question, but I can't answer it. So instead, how about? Uh, how, how about tomorrow morning, uh, if you arrive here too sweet, 5 a.m., I will let you have access to at least as many books as you would like to read for the morning. There isn't, there isn't services planned for the rest of the week, so you're more than happy to peruse during the day. Oh. Make... Just say, in Berzad, good lady, uh, how do you feel about the, uh, your priest leaving? Uh, looks at you. You're cloaked up still. Uh, does catch a little bit of a surprise, but uh, what did you make a? Are you proficient in, in sense motive? Yes. Make a sense motive check. Okay, not great. There is that. Okay. Cornell saw this too. There's a a sudden stiffness, a fright-filled expression that she quickly covers, but it seems to happen at the same time when the moment uh, Melian starts talking, I was going to say Moki, when Melian starts talking again. I know, we're just so similar. Yeah. Who are these Mo? And she, 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 you know, we'll see who says, well, there's been a lot of recent construction here, including the bookshelves, bookshelves, uh, but the, um, but the father was sent to go to Serati Uni for some of the larger libraries and bring back more uh, travel tomes, because that is what I find the most interesting. 
as I have been studying this town for the better part of 40 years. So we were as a favor to you, just your funny about it? Good comment. Okay. Seems to be willingly accepting. Um, as I start talking, I'll just mm. start like walking around looking at the old uh... From you, her outward plea is a cry for something else. Where is she? What does she seem to be placing that? Um, is it in front of her or is it behind her? Ah, uh, she would. Like, is she like she, looking over my shoulder at the statue? When the I'm moment, doing that? the moment you you rotate around so that you're facing the doorway, she is constantly making eyes to what you think is the direction of the mirror slash okay. bookshelf slash all of that. It's all clumped in one corner. Yeah. So, uh, as I'm talking to her, but it, but it seems more like she's looking at it and then remembering to look at you, yeah. and then looking back and remembering to look at you like she's yeah caught in something. Um, I'm gonna try to look at books on the bookshelf and the table behind her and I'll wander around to see if they have any uh Do you just take one out of like, oh, well, the, the, the cover? As I'm to her. Uh okay, yeah, no, I'm not gonna make you do perception. This is the bookshelves just see if they have any names on the book covers. The bookshelves hold signs, but the books in indicate a general category, seemingly only two. Spiritualism and travel, like she said. Seemingly each stack, although it appears two separate stacks on the actual table, unfiltered from the, the shelf. Seemingly each stack relates to a type of country, either books on religion, traditions, and belief systems, or guides to known towns, as she pulled out one to say more. Uh, countrysides and its history, etc. So you're looking at, uh, even off-continent, you're looking at the one that she pulled off said San Mora and Ravik, Rav, Rav, Ravka's tides. Tides. Would you uh, consider yourself a holy woman? Uh, where, where are you? Okay, in front of it. So, you're around the bookshop area. Someone yeah. else up at the altar or anything. Up here and she yeah basically she's trying to at this point when you're trying to just walk around she's trying to address you like children I'm like trying to like lid, uh, lids off please I, it's more for decoration but there are bodies in this so please don't uh, I think I think they are locked sealed at least by the priest uh, you crack one lid which you she said was locked immediately you, and you just smell this very old smell of rot eggs Stop. Pull the lid off. Oh my bad. You half <laughs> disrespectful to the goddess. They're already dead. You see, like this. You're defiling a holy place. Uh, this. this you've opened up place. the like the slightest part of the tomb, and there's this. Nice. Which you've not heard before. I this. Apologize. He is, uh, she. She. Oh, she just races over to you and just and just uses her whole body and just goes. <laughs> And puts the the tomb's lid back in place beside you, even though you've oh, basically so done it. It slipped. We do not have any problem. We do not have any large churches. Or yes, I, I I believe San Moore is quite a. It's if you would need to go to the King's Bay to get that to get that pre, that pre treatment. But, but, but please look. If there are no priests here, who's uh, preaching to the common person? Right? No one. She's the, the next one. week. Do you offer any spiritual guidance? Uh, I offer uh, uh, words of wisdom I've heard from the father and the books, which I'm quite learned in. Is she still holding the book that had the D on it? Yes. Can I try and... Um, as she was like pushing it back, Killer. pushing the thing, can I just try and sort of like... Slide one out? Yeah. She's piled two more books on top of it while in one arm so that she could push the, to the tome so you can <laughs> slip yeah. it out. Uh, uh, Doctors and Dentistry, mm. a book by Dr. Hildeman. Lovely. I'll just keep it under my poncho. Stolen. Uh, that's funny, because as soon as you grab it, there's like a smell that is... Uh, well, you had it stuck in your nose so much the moment you exited tunnels that smell like of methane. methane somehow doesn't stick to the like the case but the moment you like grab it and and like try to tuck it away carefully you always smell it just from the pages from where that bind 
breaks in between and there's there's something it's very faint but you can get that and, uh, the moment you grab a book from her she looks at you with fright i'm an avid reader uh, yes of course you can be an avid reader you're just not supposed to take books on the and i mean you 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 stash it but i'm guessing there are other books uh yeah like i'll i'll Put that one sort of stash it away and then i'll just sort of like grab another one and start reading out in the open yeah I'll like start reading the first page uh interesting spirituality myths on the the port towns of the capital continent of isora that is what, did you know according to this book you can throw salt over your shoulder and it'll get rid of ghosts that is crazy i apologize this is the wisdom from the we uh we we do so uh, we often supply a type of uh, powdered silver and and uh and and uh and if the father is lucky he can bring back some of the holy water from there are like there are wells in the temples in the major cities that have a kind of ever flowing vat of it we, we bring it back here and we help cure people of the thing that um that he he turned into in people and she points to the statue or you can cure that uh you would hope well i mean you just said that you've been sure people people have people have people have, people have uh, uh undercome some bloating mm. uh, but that tends to come from the of uh, uh it's either a fungus or it is a a type of uh, disease airborne disease we call like the, the, like the stuff on your mirror that, that uh, made me about fungus she looks back at it uh it's a type of it's a type of what do you mean like yeast i think it's i think it's i think it's something that was grown i think it, i think it was grown off of a type of natural she looks back and she has bodies no. you know that any type of Mushroom that's always a total humus. Yeah, that's because it isn't. Um, this is a, this is an overgrowth. She doesn't even like look at it. Well. Anytime I'm just talking to you. Okay. I'm, I'm talking to Brad's at the moment. Yeah. yeah I, I know words. I know uh, words yeah. of Elvish. Multilingual conversations. <laughs> In fact, if you want to get more information on the Pharaoh and their religious, the. Uh, the books on the reverie I found were quite interesting. The reverie? What's you that? don't mourn death, do you? Well, mm. I do. I know, it's human. Mm. It's more of a celebration of the passing, but I guess to a human it could be seen to be. I don't really understand. At this point, I'm now even more confused than the book I read that confused me. Sometimes the best information is practical. Um, and as you're up investigating this top region, as you try to slide back one of these things, you can see visibly there is, at least from this angle, there is a, a small source of light coming, projecting out. So the mirror doesn't really catch it, but the corners of these mushrooms that look to be almost like wet and they have almost uh, a type of uh, liquid residue on the surface of the mushrooms, they seem to reflect some of that light in a kind of angled... Yeah. Yeah. Angled way. Stone's flavor does. Uh, so there's yes. There's something. Is there anything on the table in front of the tiger? Yes. There appears to be fluffed up a type of silver, pure silver, no decorations, a crown. Or some sort of like monarchal monarch wrong words. A type of a type of either holy uh, holy and religious uh, decor or or it's nobility or it's or it's related to the Keta. Do I recognize it? Like this isn't the same religion I'm practicing, basically. Or it's I... like if it was more and more extreme, yeah, okay. but then it was also cut from like maybe the statue that does seem like aligned, but even and it's. It's supposed to show her like reaching out, like mm. a hand uh, covering the people or giving power to the people that are, 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 are listening to her. Uh, but, but the horns yeah. and, and... Just a dead wrong. Yeah. 
I mean, it you know could just be the their their extension of the culture. Please, I I applaud you. Please do not stay here. Yes, you can read these are books. So that is a that is just a book. There's a lovely book on agriculture. We know a lot about this. As a of cruel as agriculture, because you know we are in war lands, and the the growth of things here is, is far worse than it ever used to be. I'll, uh, I'll approach the mirror while there. Okay. While he's annoying her. You approach the mirror and. It was actually hard to... There's so much, like, moss that's covering the central part of it, you realize that it, it is f- heavily fractured. Underside of all of this, like, green coverage, and then obviously on top of the green is the bulges of purple, but that mirror is shattered and stuck to the wall, seemingly by the moss. Such lovely penmanship and work. Lovely. Yes, well, we, uh, we source them from the best places. Out, our Keta has to offer. And that being said, we do the miss out. Well, the bindery often produces books that we or others who come here are wanting to mass produce. And we do have uh, uh, Ma- uh, uh, what's her name? Madam, Madam Dagenfond. She has given grand donations, including both of the bookshelves here. We have a, a shelf of scrolls, which is not yet filled. The torches just go out. Uh, I turn them off to save power. It's a little, it is a little worrying. I did that. Just Just look at the mirror. (laughs) Uh, I will, I'll give um, Melion a bit of a, like, just. I basically would annoy her. I'm going into the hallway. Okay. Uh, do a sense motive for me as well. Because obviously you're getting a lot of what Cornell is picking up. Good and man. She, she, you can tell that she's definitely c- continuing to put up walls the moment she looks like she's about to be afraid. Like she's afraid, not of you, or Cornell. You even notice that she's not, often her glances are in remembering that you're there, rather than remembering that you're a threat. So it's all, it is all weird. I'm gonna close the book and I'm gonna say, I'm a, actually a recent convert uh, to, the, to the religion, uh, probably Ooh. about 30 years or so. Uh, and I'll just quickly stride over to the statue and I'll pick up the crown. What does this mean? What is. This? I've never heard ah. of this sort of thing. What? Mm. I'm stuck in the morning. Ah. Yeah. Uh, I. Uh. Te- technically, this is a lovely statue, uh, exactly what I've it, seen in my trances of what uh, she looks like. But uh, I've, I've never heard of a crown. So, it, it, not related to any current uh, monarchs. Uh, it was a crown that was given, but days ago. Uh, some sort Very of beautiful construction. There was a bunch of uh, protesters, uh, rioters, out the front of this here temple, and all they did was make it so that the priests would leave the day after they stopped and uh, that we would be given that as a gift. They, want, they just wanted the priests to go on a trip? Pyra, it was hard to, it's hard to describe. I saw, he doesn't have a face, he has a mask. A type of large, um, it looks like bronze. Just like a bronze mask that only reveals his eye slits, which look to be brown eyes, I couldn't see it that well. And, and they, they, they carried him in here, and then from one of his bags he produced that. Not the cushion, that. That's my cushion. And, uh, and all of this, this jug is wine. It's fluffy. It's fluffy. It's pretty fluffy. And like surprisingly, you know, at least, at least the fabric, it's not silk, but it is a type of like, Wait, this fire started a, a riot in front of the church? Uh, I'm not exactly sure why. He and the, and the father had a great discussion before the father's exit of the town. And uh, all he wanted to do by the end of it was to give us a gift and to settle some sort of debate between him and the father offering this as 
Recompense or a prize? I'm not sure. Why would you just why would you just make a scene in front of a church? That's that's so disrespectful. Yes, this is, and you, I mean you're looking at it. It's very rather uh, simple and or, it's an ornament, but it doesn't have any like gem, in, gem infused parts to it. It's nothing like that. It's just pure silver. So Kara and the, and the priests left. The day apart, I think. Yeah, and you you. He was leaving anyway, so you asked him to go and get some travel books. Oh, yes, yes, he, he always offers to get me the things that I'm looking for. He's quite a good old man. Did he tell you why he left? I'm in the, I'm in the need of some spiritual guidance right now. But... Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't honestly give you that much, other than that he said he would be gone for approximately a week. But he said it could, the, the, the trip could continue further, but if it did, he would bring back even more books. So I think that means he's either doing a pilgrim, pilgrimage, or it is a type of re reacquiring of tomes and and religious texts. Seratuni is is quite woke for one of the major cities. Oh. Yes, quite quite woke. I say like perfectly the Barazad word for work. It has awakened here. It's got it. Is there any other, I feel better just being in this place, but is there any other holy people in the town? Ah, uh, well there was, but he's been, well, he's gone now, and it was recently a big, uh, of the apothecary. They also worshipped Tula, and, uh, and that place was heavily ransacked, and then the, and then the man was hung. So that was the sculptor, that was the creator of this. She points again to the mural, the image. Do you not have a... Any other religious figures? Nope. So there's no one who worships the Rappus? Um, sorry, the law bearer? Greatly damaged, or or had undergone something that stopped both the mining operation, but also the Passover, of which people can, under the mountain, move between the city of Seratuni and Fall Rock. Oh. It's had some uh, delaying lines in terms of the supply of their silver ores and our brass. That, I believe, is being fixed by the, the father as he heads down east. It's quite ordinary, but uh, quite it's unordinary that these paths are blocked. It's been... Mountains just don't stop working. Silly. What? Ooh, eh, and what are you doing while well, this whole thing is happening? I'm, I'm down. <laughs> I'm just checking the... Through this hallway. Come through. There is. I'll move it for you. There is a tiny trap door. Trap door. Yeah, I'll go down. I'm exploring. Okay. Okay. My friend. My friend. What are you talking about? <laughs> he left ages ago. I don't know. He's getting more here. Uh, I don't have a friend to give him my life. As you two ghost. continue, I want to quickly cut to Mokai and Grok. For you guys, you have just seen a small military brigade, militia, moved past with very minimal light. Your horses were tied a few, a few trees away, and, and these trees, by the way, spanning at least 80 feet. So these are tall trees. Militia just missed all that heavy stuff. You didn't have any camping stuff. No, the only... Uh, yeah. The only thing was the horses, right? Yeah, uh, uh, luckily, oh, oh, thick trees. Of trash being thrown out the window. Yeah, there was a lot of trash. <laughs> they could have called them to stay away, but they didn't. They investigated the the hey, tower. What was that? And, uh, must have been away. But for Moki, as you and and Grok are yeah, up right. in this heavily uh, me methylated Cutlery. area, what do you do? I'm currently uh, not underneath the. Further in, I'm at the edge. You're back at the edge, at yeah. the edge of the, the mountain pass. Give me a moment. Uh, I'm as, as if it just understood. It's carrying down a single fork in its mouth, in its mouth plate. It's not even a mouth, it's just like sliding in a piece of metal. And uh, it's weird fork face it's now. Like a yeah, kind of. No, no, no. <laughs> right. Literally no mouth, it's just two plates of metal that are just in front of an opal. Okay. This place is getting a little dangerous. He's out. I have a plan. 
We should make an emergency if those two fuck up. Well, I have the ability to turn on screen to a bio. We have some rope. We can make a giant wick. But you can turn me into a candle. No, I can turn screen into a candle. Oh, okay. Squeeze. Okay, screen. It's beautiful. Yeah, that looks very beautiful. As its face comes out, as its insides burn. Okay. Oh, yes, but how would that help? Well, that would be this nice. shit is method. Screws jump your mind. Very explosive. Oh. So, we got some rope. Actually, let's use the um, tab and rag and tapestry. Alright. That won't burn that fast enough to soak it in the oil. If you want it to be like a. Like, like if it light one end and it goes all the way through really fast and you need to soak it in the oil. Good idea. As Grok will bring out oil some from. oil from his canister what the fuck? on his flame fryer. You have infinite oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. Dip some. I don't know, it just, it just keeps regenerating in the tank. <laughs> the DM just allows it. I don't know why. It's my only good attack, I wonder why. Uh, he dips it in. But um, also, you have to understand that this goes into. If they, they, if they escape down here and we light it, and. Oh, I know. They'll die. Oh, yes. We're gonna have to run through, and we have to light it out while we run for the tunnel. You mean, I can't pit for the other end of the tunnel. Oh, I know, I'm gonna be waiting on the other end. I'm actually gonna check out the apothecary and hold the space. Wait, so I stay down here? Yes, I'll give you a signal. <laughs> How close is the back end there? Depends on how big the thing is. Anyway, it worked. It worked. Relax, the clip. Oh, most definitely. You'll probably collapse the whole rich district. Anyways, take this. All right. So you're gonna have to light this up. I don't care about it. Splint it. All right. So your goal is when I say now, light it up. In the gas area, it will explode. Wait, like who? The whole place will explode, right? Look, I'm in the gas chamber. Oh, yeah, I'll have a little bit. It's just a little bit. Go <laughs> on. The rope's long enough that you'll take. I, I was waiting for you to how lie, long, but it's not really a lie. Is, you just don't know how, how bad. How long did this work? That you, he, he, the tunnel is. The tunnel is. Over four kilometers long. What? You have to travel yeah, 40, like 40 minutes to get to the end. Right. So it's only 60 feet long. <laughs> he gave me a 60 foot long rope, which he soaked in oil. Great. Cool. Yep. Right. Right. So I like this, and then it'll go down there and explode. You can run. I don't have any. Oh, Squeak can light it. Yeah. Yes. Squeak can light it for me. Why does he have to be doing that? I'm just worried because lying here in this small tunnel at the very end of it, he's open face and look. Now, I'm going to shoot out behind me. Will I just, like, like Cornell's gun, will I just shoot out of the cliff into the distance? K style. Awesome. <laughs> You're probably going to die. Right. Now, I need you to have a phrase to call a screen to go on fire. Can it be fire? I didn't think I would need to prepare for this. Sure. Glad I did. Why would you not think this? Grok is a psychopath, right? Screw you. Inadvertently, I did prepare. Wait, is just fire. Grok is kind of evil. Cast. Flare. Got a screen. Fuck you. When says fire. Yes. When I say. Should I say it? Will you do it if I say it now? Yeah, his face would just go fire. You have to actually drag him into the area. Oh, that's fine. Wait, 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 hold on. What if I go down there and I throw Scree into the pit and he runs down and explodes it? I don't want to die. Fuck, I die. Fine. No, don't worry. You, <laughs> you won't die. <laughs> don't worry. I've calculated the risk. The risk is measurable. 
And you're like, you know, I have yeah, a snare. What, what if I just throw so it? What if I just twist a bunch of the foil work around the spear and I can throw it in? Oh. I like how Dan came back and you're now going to be a terrorist. <laughs> Man, yeah. it changed fast, but it's okay. He was a terrorist. <laughs> you can do that if you want. He was, yeah. yeah. The actually the last episode should, should have like, warned me. Should you go through? What if they see you? Can you, like, hide your face again? Like, you just, oh, yeah, I can change my skin color. His <laughs> skin changes to a human tail like that. should be fine. Uh, you you can say all the slurs. You look very human like that. Yep. Yeah, I just kind of fixed my ears. Anyways, Anyways. You can cut them off. More general body shape. Hell of it. Okay, so where are you gonna go? Alright, I'll be waiting for the Mente Puffer <laughs> Okay, you're gonna walk to the end. You're yeah. going to the end and going through. Okay. It's currently uh, open by like a little, little jammy thing. I don't know if you can lift it. So. We moved most of the stuff off it. Mo- oh, most of yeah. the stuff, yeah, yeah, they did some moving. And the. I don't remember if the stairs going upwards to it were broken because they were pretty old, but. They were. The ladder was broken. The ladder was broken, yeah. Um, so hope you remember. Yeah. Good to it. If we don't come this way and you hear people coming down, that's not us. Just say fire and light it up. Say fire. Say fire and scream will trigger. But you have to be at the trapdoor from when you do that. Why does this just remind me of Kung Fu Panda 3? Otherwise, it won't work. What if I the test? Three. What if I go down to the trapdoor as well? I go somehow squeeze my way through the trapdoor and I just wait there and I can push fire, put put the little thing down there and explode. Well, I'm also the hair, so we can wait for my work. That, that's well, what we do. Do we need to do this? Like, is it like... Well, there's two reasons why we could do this for fun. One Sorry. reason is we're fucking over the humans, which is very hilarious. The second reason I, I is a, we could deal with any gold. danger that could come through this oh. tunnel. The third is I saw that goblin and he bit Melion and. <laughs> well, I have well, no love for those in the sanctuary. <laughs> I would be remiss if I just called rights for destruction for fun and no problem. But it's fun. I like to mention the tunnel starts at one end and you come out the other. Yeah. So you will just split the town in two. Yeah. I yes. totally didn't prepare. Right. So, anyways, I you know what? I think I will just stay acts of terrorism. Well, David has to have a personal checklist. Head on down, drop it around the spear, have to squeeze right it, throw it in the tunnel. Right. Like I knew we were the so bad guys, but I don't think we're this bad. <laughs> well, the humans are pretty bad too. I so, agree. Um, it's who's the baddie? Why are you going you know, to bad bitches. Oh, so this case will be us. Yeah. Why would you need to go to the top there to know being the destroyer of the entire town and settle down? Also, I'm going to make sure that we have an escape room. If they have one, right down there. Awesome. You're just going to make it bigger. But I'm planning for that failure. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I would too. Also, now it comes to mind, if we destroy it now, wouldn't we have the more trouble? Well, I already want it. Yes, but that's not for destroying a town. <laughs> We're on two stars right now. Drop this <laughs> like, wait, yeah, wait. might as well get the five. Let's get the five. So, I didn't even know this bar above my head existed with stars. Let's just <laughs> max it out. It's not even two stars. It's like we got a five. <laughs> we got a speed. I, I, I put you. At, I put like, you at two stars, you. and then I killed the guy before you could get to the police station. You have speed ticket. Oh, we're not gonna just open up in this school. Uh, yeah. If we, it's like Skyrim, where like if a guy tries to talk to us, we just ignore them, and then it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. As long as nobody catches us, oh, we're running little cool. Run. Run. We do. If we killed a bunch of people last time, and they somehow caught us. I, I, I believe that they can catch us. Yeah, now we're causing more devastation. Look, the more destruction look. we cause, the less likely they're going to be to find us. I don't look. I look. I <sighs> no that. trust. They don't go so after we you. We will never light like a fire or whatever it is. We're fine. Is the right. reason. Anyways, that's crazy. <laughs> no, high wisdom. If we're low, low wisdom. Low wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom, this, this fits. Yeah. Anyways, if we're getting chased, gotta give up. If we're getting chased, <laughs> I will kill them. <laughs> and we can run. Oh if we blow up the town, we're gonna throw it in. Why would we get out of here, though? 
I'm pretty sure he's neutral. Because they're neutral. going to keep that place. I'm neutral, no. Jet. No, yeah. no, no, no. Huh? Is this I'm called my destruction dead. pile? <laughs> you broke I'm slightly guys. prepped. Oh, I know. Chaotic good. No, neutral. Alright, chaotic good. Chaotic evil. Chaotic evil. Anyway. Alright. So Grok heads down. I still don't understand why you have to go through to the box fairy. You just want to get stuff there. Yes. Good, actually. I'm just bored. <laughs> He's like, I, I've, I've been sitting in a tower. It's been long. It's only been like what an hour. Like and a three hours. No, it's been a, it's been a few hours by this point, but but like more around three ish. I trust. Don't think it's slow. Wait for them to I can't out. wait for our stealth section where you roll at the end of the game. You're not going to go out. I thought you were going to go in the apocalypse. Yeah, I'm going to go on the building and sit there. That'll be level twenty. I'm not going to leave the game. What do you do, Murky? Okay. You're just gonna go ahead. Alright, remember, your keyword is screw all in there. What? Okay, <laughs> say your keyword and right, screw all in there. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> So I think I think just the top of its face opens up like a like a little dispenser machine, and the little ball is there. It starts to glow slightly. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah, it's the head. It, yeah, so it cracks it off, and, and and you see it slightly glow, and then Grok manages to like you know say a safe word. <laughs> Grok doesn't have safe words. Doesn't have a safe word. You know, it makes sense. This thing doesn't have a safe word. <laughs> Scree. You're probably gonna do it, but. Wait, couldn't Scree just do this whenever he wants? Yes. Oh, fuck. Scree! <laughs> giving you a lot of responsibility. Tell me that. Don't do it unless you have to. You know, if I light this on fire and you're going to be angry, wouldn't you be blown up? Okay. Oh, yes. Definitely. Okay, so, so I can understand. I'm going to say that this guy, this creature's. Emotional state is a skittish level of enjoyment. Oh, right. Scree like, is a pyromanic and chaotic. Right, exactly. That's what I mean. Like, <laughs> Just like Grok. this, this cre- well, That's what I was going to say. Based on Grok's emotional <laughs> response, like, all you're doing with your monster is sharing its emotions. So basically, you're creating a type of, like, giddy excitement yeah, towards this event. And he like, will share. Them. Share that excitement. Right. Anyway. You feel the blades that are, like, on its back that would go above its head to spin. Where are you waiting? It, like, tries to twitch. Are you in the tunnel? At the uh, edge. Uh, at the very entrance. The, of the, the, yeah. cliff. the most breathable part, oh. yeah. Okay. Right. Well, hopefully I do not have to kill thousands of people. It's not thousands. It's only eight words. Sorry, let me reiterate that. I love by the end of the episode, he's like, blow it up. Thousands of children. Rich children. <laughs> it's fair. From the angle, from the angle you're going in, you're at least demolishing. How the hell did we go from campaign one, all of us here, saving the world, to yeah, let's just blow up every single rich kid. <laughs> this side of town doesn't have an orphanage. <laughs> That's because none of you decided to be. Uh, Grok, just go. I'll like no notable Grok, humans, go. maybe. Must die. Grok, this, this no. Okay, go. Right. This tunnel exists for a reason. Crazy ass fucking orcs. <laughs> Crazy ass That's why orcs. we should d destroy the orcs. <laughs> I'm down, let's kill them all. This is why. Here's the thing every other orc is an orc with C, he's an orc with K. That makes sense. A lot of inconsistencies, but then. Just the look behind you. But then the last blue. kilometer. Uh, the last kilometer seems to even out. It seems to become perfectly smooth in that brick there's bricks on the ceiling and they're what you would imagine in human text is like egyptian size these are like nine or ten foot wide bricks slated uh horizontally over the top giving you a type of like dense roof and the bricks. walls form a very similar type of evenly placed there's no cement these bricks are perfectly placed to make a type of corridor tunnel that can survive age and time. Once you get to the end for Grok, there's something that with your eyes and dark vision that only you can see that well, is cement lines. Mm. The back wall. What type of cement? The wall that has the broken stairs. You see like a plaster, a kind of very old gray, 
thin line between each bricks, where before these were just smooth, on top of each other, perfectly formatted, even the roof. No oh, cement, it's nothing. It's a paper wall. And despite the age of the cement and how well it's stuck to this back wall, you're realizing it's probably been the most recent cover-up. And that is this followed by the incredibly strong aroma that seems to slowly drift behind you. And it's only at that edge of the wall, that, that place where there's only a stairway up and seemingly a fake wall, that aroma, that strong methyl methylated smell and taste just in fully envelops you. You feel like you're suddenly surrounded by alcohol air. And you're like, am I crazy for seeing something that is on no, no other wall here, no other surface? Come on. Uh, Cement. Crockle pull out his great axe and just hit him with the pummel. Wow. It creates a spark. Yeah, yeah it creates a spark and dies. The pummel's wood. Pummel's wood. Fair oh, enough. Okay, Water of wood, that's fine. Also, most of this is, is either a, gr a granite or sandstone. It's pretty hard to tell, but it looks like a mix of the two. And uh, as you hit it, You're looking at probably, at least by the initial impact, the reverberating sounds, sounds like at least five, five feet of dense stone. Like that is a wall that at least each stone here probably weighs close to a ton. It's but there's a space behind the wall. But there is some reverberating that carries after that. It's so muffled, you have to be in a desolate tunnel to be able to hear that echo, which you are. find one of the jewels of iron. Right, this is a secret tunnel. Just behind this one wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Might Carpool. be a wall, let's find the break. Mm -hmm. Carpool, look out, uh, open up the hatch fast. And you can see, see the hatch. Going on. See if anyone's going to Okay. Why okay. Phoenix Concrete has like um, a page break. You open it slightly, you look out Probably. just with your hand and with your, with your eye level. Uh, the, the statue seems to still be in place. The amount of furniture that looks to be pushed out to the sides. You see more furniture on the sides of your view. Maybe there's a basement. It almost doesn't make sense that this one tunnel just leads to an exit. One way, right? Right. I feel like that's oh, that way makes sense. Right? This is at the end. Is or visibly at the end. Then the brick wall that looks to be it's like newer. Like the ladder, and then like behind that. Yeah. Rocko, leave the hatch open so we can breathe. Mm. And then he'll start trying to find any lever or thing to open up this wall. Okay, well you've got at least even the metal parts of your great axe, so just try to use a... Just try to do a strength check. Yeah. Show us your strength. Just being a strong boy. Being super strong. Oh, not gonna... Oh, oh yeah. I almost got an 18. Anyway, it's not fine. You... Awesome. You do some solid whacking. And you do wow. feel like it shifts, like a centimeter back. So you like are able to basically kick it or 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 push it back, so that it it, it seems like in some areas the cement or plaster that is put as spaces between each brick on the back wall, the fake wall, appears to not have all of the holes and does seem to slip a little bit, a tiny bit. So you are aware that it's probably going to be more helpful to have the rear half of horsepower yeah. to add to your oomph. Only you have the horse and then the, the squirrel with the fire. Problem is it's just an hour and a half for you to go there and then back again, so. Up to you. <laughs> and your squirrel is currently like like monkey gripped by monkey, monkey so that is not getting out. Alright, looks like I'm gonna have to increase. Screw roll on this to make sure make it's me a more important. <laughs> Blow it up now. <laughs> no. What do you do? Okay. I'm gonna get monkey's help. Let's see what. Well, just like a notepad. We can like oh, send sticky okay. notes. A projector. Yeah, just between the four of us. All right. Why are you here? Can you make them? You get back. You're back. Why are you back? I found a uh, secret basement, and I need your help to break some okay. secret basement in the secret tunnel. Yes. Secret tunnel. I don't think it'll find a secret basement. Secret basement. Uh, <laughs> you want me to break down a wall? Yes. Okay, let's go. 
Should Should I bring Squee in the pool? It's so close. No. No. Stay here with the oil. What if, what if you use the non explosion? Non-waste grade parallel with the oil soak rubber. Uh, do you do you <laughs> feel <laughs> like you use the explosion to open up? The you are projecting a more like nervous and affirming emotion. <laughs> are you still projecting your excitable giddiness to the detonation that Scree can accomplish? Because that's the emotion that you would share. Detonation abomination. Happiness. With absolute dread of <laughs> <laughs> So now Scree, Scree is afraid of itself, which you Scree, might need. It just starts shaking. I think it does. I think it little little like jitters. Four hours. Light it up. <laughs> oh, we're fucked. All right. Imagine you're gonna get thrown in jail. <laughs> no, you're not. If you get thrown in jail, the whole town is going to fuck off. The area where the jail is is going to be completely separate from the whole town. <laughs> well, actually, it's like four in the morning. It takes a, it's like, uh, th at this point, it's closer to perfectly midnight. Although it's... Because we got here, like... No. Yeah. So, like, you go on Black Hat Door. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Talking early morning. Let's get right oh, down look, this it's a beautiful sunrise. <laughs> I burned my axe, man. Let's go. Let's go. I love natural tectonic events. Ah, uh, it's another one of those natural disasters everyone knows about in Demeter. And all, all, all the natural disasters. That's oh, crazy. Wow. It blew up only the four people. Wow. So that's like, what's the other three hours? So by the time you both get back, no, I, know. I want both of you to make me, only blow both of you make me intelligence checks as you get yeah. back to the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Three plus two does equal three. I agree. Intelligence check. What, for that equation? Nope. That would be mean of me. Uh, three. Cool. Hey, it does play. It equals three. Uh, I got seventeen. Seventeen. Good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. Okay, Monkey, you only lose six temporary HP again. You're already uh, down a fair lethal. bit. Non-lethal, yeah. Which recovers in four hours from the last thing. Yeah, so you need to spend another wait, sixteen hours <laughs> until you're not. No, hold, hold, hold. It's only four so hours from the in, latest from, one. Like, I think just recover one per hour. Recover one per hour. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so you recover How much two. The, this was three, six. Okay, good. Okay, three or six. Three, six. No, I, I have 14 now. Yeah, cool. Till I know. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, you're Let's seeing... Go. You're, yeah. Go bash down the pole. Yep. Mm. That's good, because you can just keep hitting with it. Mm. It'll eventually oh. die. Oh, wait, I need to sit in some pain poison again. It, it's basically yeah, just like a, a, lock, a loss of con yeah, not loss. mainly it's mainly added. mainly mental, but a little cognitive. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Really <laughs> Fatigue. Uh, but basically everything. Oh yeah, it's a lot. But also, <laughs> right, yeah. Just punch down a tree and get <sighs> Look, as long as you don't have any convulsions, I think we'll be fine. Or I don't get angry at all. Yeah. yeah. What time is Delion and, um... I think they gave you four hours, something like that. They would say we'd be back in... I think we said, uh, we'll all be back whenever, just make sure you don't have a set time mode for when you have to blow up the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that, that might have been the general... That would be the thing we were saying. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Any circumstances, you should not do that. Yeah. Four hours. That was the only thing That's we said. That's my only instruction. Right. See you later, guys. Yeah. That's what I said before. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you guys well left the noble's house. Mm. Yeah, that was like an hour ago, I think. Yeah. So yeah, this so direction. That's when the four hours began. Oh, I'll no. be with that. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. leave. Well, no, Scream was still in there. Yeah, Scream was there for a bit. And then Scream came out. Scream came there. out, basically. So right yeah. after. It was like when we were at the tavern. Yeah, basically. Yo. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's go um, smash down. We're at work. Yeah. And we don't have much left to do with it now. All right. We can pass the apothecary. Mookie, I want you to give me a strength check, and uh, Grok, I want you to roll me a d20, and... Uh, uh, can I do an assist check? You can do an assist check, exactly. So, yeah. You, you just can. Okay. You get a turn. You did okay. Whoa. I need two. Oh. Is it just me, or is it Dizzy? Dizzy. Skip him Dizzy. Oh, I hope it's not the uh, open vent with it. The smell of rotten eggs and a bit of burning that seems to sure. saturate you and make your mouth salivate. So just yeah, gonna pass out of the fucking <laughs> <turtle. laughs> <laughs> 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 Alright, so what do you guys do? Uh, I'm gonna go to the 
the hatch is open, so there is a good Okay, I think I didn't get high. I got um I think it was from you walking A sixteen. The strength I'm doing. What did you get? Yeah, the strength. Uh, I got a six because I can't move my fist. (laughs) So you see Grok just (laughs) like you use your fist and Grok just chucks his whole body at the wall, (laughs) tries to wall slam it. And you realize that Grok as you exit, now you're dizzy. Your hand hit the side again, it's a little hard. There is there is an indent. Uh, and it was caused from Moki, but Grok did just throw his body against the side of the wall. Mm-hmm. And you're noticing only one cube about five, of, you know, five and a half feet off the ground. One brick that isn't the bottom brick. There's one brick beneath it. Each of these bricks are about four feet tall. They pretty the brick fell out. It got pushed back, and because it, it didn't cement properly, one side of it, the side, you, the direction you punched. Well, here's that. Do you do, do you decide for a wide brick? Center, corner, middle. 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 Okay. So the pushback is maybe four or so inches. <clears throat> One stone, singular, and you see the roof sifts with a few different I types of dust. Uh, 50 feet back. Okay. And. <laughs> 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 and like. That button. <laughs> Breaks okay. his neck. Ah, yeah. It's okay. much better than using your fucking um, or weapons. Pretty what did you get? F- two magical. What did you get formally yeah, on your yeah, yeah. Um, on your strength check? Starts at about four and a half feet up and goes eight feet tall. Your head perfectly collides with the center of where you had already impacted, and that brick just gets at three feet further in and you can see that it itself seems to lift the slight edge of the other brick and then two bricks in succession fall in on themselves not creating a pathway but these are like one ton bricks that your head almost gets like one brick above you almost lands on top of you so you you pull your head back you realize you can't move any part of your body (laughs) (laughs) spine spine broken uh Oh, um, good. Right. Make I another make another terrible. intelligence check for me. This is just br- actual brain damage options. Oh, no. uh, 11. And that's okay. I was going to roll you. That's okay. Anything above a 10, I was going to give you some more temporary damage. But no, that's okay. Oh. Okay. Is there is, there is basically, <laughs> there is, I would say, a five foot tall gap on the upper half of the wall. Right. This wall is roughly 11 feet tall. Five foot of the upper half has collapsed inwards. There's maybe four-ish foot wide opening width. I'll just get all the collapse open. These are, out. these are one ton bricks. You are, like, lifting the side of and oh, letting it just tumble. Brick. That's a thousand pounds, or is that like... Um, uh, two thousand pounds. Two thousand pounds? I can lift that off the ground. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, then, yeah. Yeah. Well, and because now they're not, like, in a perfect wall, you are able to dislodge and remove. And what you find is a seemingly uh, very, very... Yeah, you can't lift it. I can do 240. Yeah, this is 2002. Yeah, I can do 240. Oh, you have two numbers. Yeah. That's crazy. He's got two numbers. I can still lift it. It's wild. Is that, your, is that when you I rage? I can lift off the ground 200 and 400, uh, 2,400 pounds. Okay. Which is like <laughs> one of the big toughest. So that... S- that smell, oh, that boy. smell oh, that from Moki is making you salivate that you don't know why. That rotten that rotten egg smell, it shouldn't make you salivate. Uh, it's more like your mouth is going numb. And this blast of wind from inside of the tunnel you just made wafts all of that smell back and behind you, giving you this gentle moment reprieve right of... There? It's not. It's horribly uh, old and stagnant. You found the local but orphanage. It's not but it's not that seemingly... It does have the It has the scent, but it doesn't have the strong alcohol potency. Oh, fresh air. Let's make this hole bigger. <laughs> and for you, you're like, fresh air. My mouth tastes sweet. Uh, Why is breathing sweet now? That's weird. Like, oh, oh my god, it's so good. Don't blow up that tunnel. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm going to get serious. I'm going to figure this out. I can go through it. Now, now big enough for you to... Traverse. It looks cavernous in its formation, but you notice that the walls, like the the far end of the tunnel, the walls and the floor seem to be made of this like granite and sandstone combination. Thick, massive 
one ton slabs perfectly aligned. They do not have that cement lining. They are perfectly laid on top of each other and run though the roof, like the far end of the tunnel you came from, is heavily kind of unshapen. This it is wrong, but it is shorter. It is not as tall and not fitting for your size perfectly. It is roughly nine-ish feet tall. Oh, so you have to crouch. I only have six inches of clearance. Six inches. That's all you need. That's pretty that's big. Mind. Honestly, I'd say that's more than you, what you need. Like, <laughs> six inches is, is a lot. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah, huge. You don't even have to crouch. Honestly, that's like a bad <laughs> And you find as you, I, oh, it's too big. As you, big. as you <laughs> enter, my personal preference, but too big. Yeah. there is a slope, a downward slope to the direction two. you're now going. I think two is perfect. I think the width of the tunnel actually is more important. <laughs> On an unrelated note, I think fuck if this statue of Taylor so cheeked up. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> really packing the whole bag together. Did you look at the bag? Half the horns are too big as well. Like, go for one of those. Ah, handle. 14. Handle. <laughs> It could only be sculpted by a monster that could unnaturally grow its or full. Or just like a we'll guy with a... Ladder. Ladder. <laughs> yeah. I'll do it. If, if she walks around, put it on. She, she didn't reference did that. It. She said a monster... A no, she said a monster did it. What about just like a... Specifically the sculptor. The... The... Monster? She said like a demon. Yeah. Sculptor. The, 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 the guy we saw. They had to do a troll. Troll dude. Yeah. Yes, we do. He said. It's okay. Don't worry. There's so a lot of like lot of kids. Um, <laughs> like not didn't happen to me. I wasn't there. Do you have a light source? Uh, you two. Uh, yeah, they have sweet. a. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> no, not here. They have an open. I was gonna say one of you. Yeah. One of you has the little the little yeah, pen torch, but I think that's you guys. You can see fine. Yeah, exactly. I have low light vision. Like so you can't see anything. Can't so you can see you can see Grok's shoulders and back. Uh, oh, with oh, without a cap on. Fire in life, snow, it's a fire spell. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the command word? Fire! <laughs> Green from here. We got here ourselves. Oh, you can bring your horse for me. What if, um. Where did you put many figures? Is there like a. Like an unlit torch on one of the walls? No, but there, there, there is. There is a. No, the, he's an idiot. The place, the place where those pens were, the one that you found originally, was off this wall. So you see a bunch of metal brackets that line the wall, but don't have a metal like prong of which is a pen size, which oh, have light. Grab, grab one. You grab a piece of metal now out of the wall. It doesn't have the quality of the glowingness to it, but broken. It is a broken piece of metal. You grab the pipe. Is this a magic torch or? Is it... I don't know how it functions, but. Yeah, if you gather it, I could probably copy it from the other one and figure out how to get it to work. It seems like there's a metal. That's going to take a few hours. Anyways. Seemingly, this open path, this forbidden path... <laughs> it's a wall, spark metal. <laughs> exactly. Spike <laughs> falling noise. Ding. The, Every time you do something, you should roll a d100. The cleared the foul On fiber, taste from your mouth. Back. But your head still swim and feel almost bloated. Uh, without light, it is only after moving a number of meters, the floor in the area appears wet, but not li not covered in liquid. It seems slick. I just reach down, run a finger across it, put it in my teeth. It's a thick, cold substance as you rub your fingers across it and as you rub... It, it, as you rub it into your gums, yeah. you realize there is this like strong after acidic burn that is immediately replaces that sensation of coldness, and uh, you lose most of the set, the taste in your in your upper mouth where your gums are. So you could probably eat anything right now. Uh, on top of your delusions, Mine's I want both of you to make me reflex saves. As all time exploits. Hey, look, you're all above the brain. Oh my god. That's old. a 12. 9. 9. 9 and 12. 9. Good well, both of you, not realizing that not only was the floor you were covered, you, the floor you walked over and walked into, this room, this whole area has been cordoned off. And now you're realizing that whatever has grown in its isolation covers the walls and floor in some sort of slick liquid both of you fall 
does the liquid look like? Hmm. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. A, it is a. It is a almost ice Whoa. cold, ice cold liquid. But it is so Whoa. thin, it soaks all of the surfaces around you and approaching you. It. It, it is equivalent to the grease spell, which Felix loves. If you don't escape, it's going to blow you up. Uh, and so all it is is it, this makes this whole tunnel, which is black and dark, and is is kind of becoming a bit more of like a rocky tunnel. The roof is always rocky. The oh, walls, slip and slide. Uh, slip and slide. Yeah. That's Percy. Is that Percy Jackson? Yeah, Percy Jackson. Oh, he, the, the lotuses. The, yeah. the lotus. The, the drugs. All I'm thinking of is. Like, like, yes. Okay. Maybe. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one where he's. That's all I'm imagining, So that's how Moki tries to respond to Because his mouth is numb and he falls over as a horseman. Oh. So, his, so his ability to. I have a bus form. DC is 14. Damn. That is really unfortunate. <laughs> oh, Alright. Uh, good to know you. I'm going to try to get a vial of this stuff. Sure. Uh, yeah. You, you, you know, st- st- like basically standing still. You can sweep it off either the floor or the walls. The walls. Yeah. This this tunnel continues in the darkness for quite a a, a quite a distance, but you walk at a careful pace. Well, after Grog falls, Grog oh, yeah. just decides that he's just gonna slide his butt across. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. I'll okay. stand back up and walk carefully. You're feeling, yeah. All that happened was your legs basically like slid apart to the edges of the wall, which you caught yourself on. Oh, you you didn't actually fall over. I'll have only one of my four legs off the ground at a time. Very smart. You're just like sliding. So <laughs> <awkward> <laughs> Is it like detergent where you can just go? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. It's an equivalent, even though it's as cold. It what? is. It is a, as cold as well, you put detergent in in a, a plastic pool thing to make you slide. It's not actually uh, what yeah. it would do. Felix is applying multiple Sorry. combinations of things. This is more like slick ice, exactly. Yeah. But it's actually like a wet consistency. It's like wax. It's not wax. Cold. It's an ice cold wax that blue. burns like acid. It's, 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 it's like a. It's like a bowling alley. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rock's ass is so slippery, the slippery. As you, you're following what yeah. is majorly a roughly carved path now that it becomes this slick wet at the widest points 15 feet with pockets of space for you to for Moki to swivel and for you to look at what you appear to be at some point on one side of you the stone wall gives way to blackness and the path continues, though now one side doesn't have a wall. Can I, like, touch the blackness? How, how far does it go? That oh, shit? yeah. Is there yeah, ground so still in the blackness? Ground, slick, so you can kind of see it, to the edge of what appears to be cool. some sort of sheer face. I, like, bend down and, like, this. Touch that. A sheer face. As in, touch you are, the path you were on has an edge. Okay. A drop I'll off. Touch the edge. I'm like, Fully, like, gone. Yep. I'll touch, like, the side of the wall is like. It's as slick. Like, bridge. It feels like that that granite, rough stone sliding down, covered in that thick, like, frosty layer of that liquid. Uh, it goes down oh, your full arm width, and you can't see anything. But the space in front of you does have kind of a natural curve to it, and on the path you're following, this one wall to your right is non-existent now. Yeah. Making it even more slippery, dangerous, and... Do I smell methane? It is. It's there. But it's like being heavily saturated before. Now it's kind of this faint aroma that you can't tell if it's because you were so intoxicated before or there is something here. Can you see what's down there or is too dark? The dark is not really a problem. It's just really how far I can see. You're right. So absolutely do a perception check. Grok can actually see something here. I I forget. I have... The sun blinds me, it's a problem. The sun blinds you. Dark to see us my ally. Dark in the dark. Great. Do, do we like Batman? Plus zero. Batman? Plus zero. That's great. Because 19 is very good. And it gives you a clear idea from what you're looking at as a massive hole. Oh, yeah. Well, from 
<laughs> As you begin to follow this path that majorly, it, it, it's, it's rough and it curves at the widest points where you can stand 15 feet, but what you look over as far as you can see the edge of where you stand and the width of this hole appears to be at least 40 feet wide. That's a depth. It's a big old hole. For as far as you can see down at the edge of where you are, it is clearly circular shaped, describing with imagery an ancient hole jump, that jump, goes down jump, more jump, than 120 feet. But wider than any well you've ever seen. And it's so dark and so quiet. Now, in a new space, all you can hear is the occasional drop of a liquid echoing from below. And you're trot. That's new. You won't hold on to it. I'll walk, grab a bit, grab that, uh, grab another of the torches, grip it off, walk back to the ledge. It was what, what the torch was once connected to. I'm closing my eyes, eyes, really focusing my hearing. I'll drop it and see if I can Wait, hear how long it takes to hit the bottom. Okay. okay. We'll hold up to Absolutely. Just in case Murky slips. Uh, yes, good idea. Oh. Actually, in, in the same time, you're going to drop something off the edge, make another reflex save for me. DC 14 for your grease. Okay. Uh, if, you just over, I hear if, he's, if you slip over, you have to do a reflex save, hold on to him. Except yeah. Yeah. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. really looks like an 18 for you. That's 18. Okay, reflex is... 14? Over 20. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. So you brace at the areas where there are slight... Like, you're at a cliff edge, there is some sort of rock here that seems to be pushed upwards, giving you a bit of a foot rest. Uh, okay. Good job. There's clearly water at the bottom. Throw it. You hear it hit the far edge first. Ting! And that echo goes up and down. Ting! Second hit. That seems to have gone... You've, that's 120 feet. That's how far down that goes. I feel like the tunnel's getting like thinner as it goes down. I don't know if you can tell that by... Yeah. Without sound... Without, without if I drop it on the edge, I would assume it just go straight down. I would say it's like a wall. And it's it did. It, it is, so it's obviously some sort of yeah, inner, it's but or, or it's, not, it's not like a yeah. 90, 90 degrees I was yeah I was taking the assumption that you were yeah. basically holding your full hand out to do a, a so type of that's good that. okay you fall down there. occasionally you're just hearing this like every 15 or so seconds Ting. echoing quieter and quieter running back of feet every six seconds in this game in this edition is that right? 9,000 feet or is it 5,000? Uh, I think it's for like, for, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not I even think, pretend to know. I, I think it's think, 500. I think it's, yeah, 500. So does it take three seconds? Every six seconds, 500 feet. So roughly. And this thing doesn't weigh the average weight of a person. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on, Slightly slower. I think it's different from pulling on shit. It's good to check. This is just this tunnel. No, What's the other direction? Yeah, five hundred feet. Ignoring the hole, there's another direction. Five hundred feet. Is it just a bridge? It is a it is a tunnel that you've been walking around, and the tunnel starts to curve. And once the tunnel starts to curve, at that point, one of the walls to your right disappears, and the tunnel continues. So it does seem to be a downward slope, like very slow, like a gen gentle slope. How I hear it. At that at that fifteen second point, you hear a final ting, and then nothing else. You hear it like it. Only is hitting against something. But I didn't, then, I, I didn't hear it like doing like. No, like. Okay. Ting, 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 ting. You just hear one final ting. Okay, so it's uh, a lot. Like more than 1,000. Plan B. That's B. If uh, four hours pass. I didn't hear it stop. I just couldn't hear it anymore. 1,200. Over, 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 over 2,000. Over 1,200. Four hours pass. Over a million feet down. <laughs> See that I think it goes to the center of the earth. I forgot I've got a dripping sound effect. Alright. I don't know, I don't know, but it's occasional. I could probably survive before. The maximum amount of that. You mean, what do you mean? This one was further, sorry, okay. 
the missing show. Yes. Okay. So yep. We ignored it. Definitely. This is a death tunnel. Well, you know, but there's like more of a bridge. A ledge. Okay. Explore. That's what we're going to do. It's, yeah, it's a little. It's, it's, it's the oh, ledge. No, no bridge. It's, it's, it's a, okay, good. Sorry. Continuing around. Yeah. yeah. Continuing around. All right. Remember, emergency exit this way. Got it? <laughs> okay. I'll mark it with my axe. Do you have anything you like stole it from Paul? Um, I got my you, axe. You had yeah. 60 feet of rope. Oh, you beat this oil stick now. It's mm. very slippery. Uh, I got some magic scimitars that could slow our fall down. It's fine. Okay, we'll continue on with the fall. Sure. It gets darker. And you didn't think that was possible. Shadows feel like they overlap. They get more and more dense. The slipperiness of this tunnel does not get worse, but just from your lack of sight, from Oki at least, that is probably the, the darkness adding to a slip factor. And in some parts you notice that the walls on the right side re-emerge. Rough and not s smoothed by a type of sandstone, though you feel like most of the wall in on the right side is a type of smoothened brick that has been naturally decayed over time. Uh, so it has a, a lot of rough edges, but... But now we will move again. We will move to Cornell. You head down a flight of stairs. Churchman. Um, basement, but it's I'm not, for a basis for a church. I'm not going to say that you particularly like anything that you begin to hear going down. Uh, as you head down the stairs, the ladder as you turn around you descending the ladder and stepping down into what feels just like a, a large-ish subterranean room, you turn around to find that there is already a heavy amount of, of collapse. This room itself looked like it had many more structural pillars that have fallen inwards. Uh, one only stands supporting the corner of this room, and then the back half, the half that you are now looking at, appears blocked by iron bars, a cage. That cage seems to have a door, or at least a lock, not on the side that you're looking at. A cage with a lock on the inside. So this back half of the room is basically closed off, but you're noticing on the other side of those bars is a few things that uh, are confusing, fundamentally. One, there are two big green blobs. You start to, you're hearing sounds breathing-ish. Those blobs are half covered by what looks to be a figure dressed in formal attire. But tied around his head appears to be a long ornament of bone. From the back it is hard to see. His, his body is not facing you, it is facing what is inside of these caged bars these green blobs, that is what it is facing. The real features of its face are somewhat hard to notice, but from the back of his neck, where the formal attire meets hairline, you notice the skin is uncomfortably gray, with what looks like dark green veins that spider up the back of his neck. You see, like, wrapped around the back of his head are straps that hold what is a... Straps made of bone, seemingly made of bone, that cover some sort of uh, ivory front plate of its face. Under the mask, you hear a faint, faint, faint muttering. You cannot hear, blocked by the sounds of pumping machines and a floor on one side covered in over, overgrowth. Uh, fermenting mushrooms and what looks like a, a brush, some sort of spiky brush plant. 
an overgrowth of mushrooms and what looks like coils, rubber tubes, piping that is out of the ground and seems to be wrapping in and around this room. Uh, Felix, could you pass me that box there with the... That one? Yep. Oh, thank you. This is really good. Only Jake can see. So I'll put it here. Uh huh. Only I get to see it. Secret tunnel. What's it going Okay, to? I didn't ask. Secret blob thing inside the secret tunnel. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm excited to die to those. Why? I'll pitch you up. You sound like it. Tubes are all funneled under and through the table, attaching to strange green bowls. Bowls holding green bloated heads with a mass of slimy green tubes that seem to funnel to various machines at different areas of the room. Machines pumping something into these heads, bloated heads. He appears to be working in front of them until the well-dressed form moves around the table, revealing the severed head of Albert and Simmer, but tinted green and hairless pipes and tubes attached to the areas under and around the neck where vital fluids appear to be pumped into the head, bloating it to an unnatural size. The tubes emerging from parts of his forehead filling and filled with a green liquid while the inflated green head appears to have a strong some strong features of albert sinsima his once brown eyes are now glowing with a dull yellow tint his eyes both of them fervent in their glances appear to when this body steps aside revealing one is just not moving and the other a head, a head filled with pipes, this guy right here. A head looks at you. You make eye contact with Albert Sinsuma. He makes eye contact with you, even though the figure in the, in the formal attire with the head ornament of bone doesn't seem to be facing you. Uh, Sinsuma's mouth is twitching. His mouth is moving. He's speaking to the set to the the figure the severed head is speaking but tries to look past the figure recognizing your face and as since Simma's mouth moves moving the jaw seems to rotate the head as he tries to shift his jaw the head kind of is rotating unevenly on this table as his jaw moves his head seems to rise and roll the jaw flexes, his head turns sideways, its eyes dull and yellow but blinking frantically at you. <gasps> and as the formal, formally dressed man seems to recognize that, that sudden feverishness of the head, a face barely visible behind a long pointed bird mask made of just bone turns around to you uh, not horned seemingly humanish faces you and this head and mouth twitch and try to talk the man beside the face being hidden behind a mask majorly resembles a classic classic old doctor but this mask covers the entire upper side of the face but from where the sides where the man's thick black hair and sideburns meet the skin it is gray it is covered in a maze of black and green veins like a web over his face even his face appears blackened and swollen even slightly but does resemble a Early 40s man. You, I, you are welcome to look at my project. 
you hear it almost whispers to you, but you feel like it almost echoes in the room or it's echoing in your head. On the table, there is a sword, sheathed sword, placed beside the head of Sinsima. It was Sinsima's sword, but when you killed the body, that disappeared. Only the head remained. There is a variety of equipment, cases, chests, shelves, some parts of mirrors, strange equipment and pages with writings and uh, mixed notes that seem to not be together and are just scattered to the corners of the caged room. Like on the floor covering and overlapping many of these tubes that seem to funnel up into the under half of the table, plugging into the undersides of this neck of this creature that tries to rotate its head so its eyes can look at you. I'm trying to breathe. I'll, um, I'll approach. Or I'll try and get a little bit closer. Okay. I am Dr. Nalius Hildevane. I consile the living of all races that find death to be their life. I would have thought that the elves understood their balance of life and death, but in truth, their wise oak deludes them of their own weakness. Can you comprehend death? So you're trying to keep him alive or see what happens after death. It seems to grab the sheathed sword, wax one of the bulbs on the top of its head. You see the whole thing like boom, boom. Jiggles. This one did not make it. You hear, finally. <laughs> Please help me. That's what you hear. Shush, Sinsema. I take it you're well accustomed. <laughs> Look at that Albert there. Please, wait, please. He, he looks kind of down towards you, but his eyes still not visible. Given to me as a Wrath. Wrath. One of my siblings. Wrath. Most people do not enter here with a look on their face like they have seen death before. Poor young impressionable minds. Did it stare back at you? Did death did? Is that what you're asking? Wrath. Oh. I don't think I met your sibling. Um, uh, look, I'm... I'm sort of just trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, but I take it you're... I mean, if he's wrath, are you pestilence or death? Or what's up with you? You see there is a mouth, and you see that mouth smiles. Uh, and there, there is kind of like a, a smile and then a delayed moment where he begins to talk, but he kind of cuts himself off, yet you don't, you somehow recognize that he knows something, and it's maybe not about you, but he, there's something here that he, this thing knows. Uh, I, my brother, my sibling, brought this, and it whacks Sinsima's head with the butt of his sheathed sword. He said it would follow me only 
No. Yes. The divine guarantees of a coven. Even I cannot argue with his results, despite his tonality. You are here for a book. Am I correct? That was my original intention, yes. He pulls from his jacket a heavily worn black thin book. It looks like it has all of the markings of a of a active alchemist's like scar marks on just on the cover visibly no no inscription into the words on it. there's no words on the cover either. With with so much death, I cannot say I have been stuck in the mud. I try to provide the grieving town with feasts and festivals that are only to help the town move on from their tragedies of the past few months. But each time my sibling re returns, the town suffers more, and my ability to help the outer lands becomes less like they want me to be trapped in my fall here. I am consigner of death. Is, there a, is, is it just you two? Wrath and death? He looks back to the heads. Well, he used to have wings. Maybe that is why he hates the symbol of this town. They were, they were beautiful, unlike the rest of ours. He was silent and stern before. Our duty, our right. His job for us for the last 300 years has been to secure the souls of this world to the lands between. Thy job has come after his, but Wrath has been neglecting his assigned sacred right. The Sorrow Mother used his quiet rage to boil his personality to an unstable, untamable monster of death. You must understand, I oppose his choices. But as a servant, I cannot neglect my task. This town would not have survived the haunts and wars without the celebration of death that followed. My siblings, not just Wrath, are a figure. We did not all come together. We came when we were needed, when the Titans left. Something had to fill the gap. Well, I mean, that is commendable, your effort to keep the sanctity and peace within this place. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really care. I just want the book. You hear? Part of life, the book. I know, I know the gold. Well, you want the book. I do. He walks to the edge of the wall and he takes the book from his hand and puts his hand through the book cover, and you're realizing that uh, there is a glove on. He's gloved, handed. He looks, he almost fits the attire of a plague doctor, even with a type of clone plague doctor mask esque. But as he puts his hand through the bars, you're noticing where the edge of the glove meets the wrist, it's just bone. But his face, that's skin. He puts his hand through the bars for the. Drop it on the floor. He drops the book. It lands half open and you realize it's blank. 
Well, the time has not come for you to learn that. Maybe soon. <gasps> you hear? Please. The books. Since Simma is looking favorably at you and the book, you and the book on the floor, you and the book on the floor, and his head is now sideways, just trying to make the eye contact. You see, one of the weirder parts is that all of these tubes connect to one machine that has dials and twists and things that look more, far more mechanical than the rest of this room, the rest of this temple had ever had. You don't even know how it could have been put down here through that one hatch. It almost seems too much. And you even noticed what looks kind of like a, uh, a, a brace or some sort of, uh, some sort of support to, to hold an entire human in this basement. But you don't know how this stuff has gotten down here if it's all sealed off. The one above all, the key to the gate, it's coming, it's coming. You hear it wheezes. This doctor is taking not even a second glance at it now that he is standing, waiting for you, approaching and stepping over what is a ton of rubble. This is just the, 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 clat, the collapsed and decrepit area. You pick up the book and now you are close enough to realize that there is kind of this almost red aura that kind of surrounds his entire body. It's so faint you can barely notice and the only light source in this room seems to be coming from the fact that there's maybe two candles on the table and the glowing yellow eyes. I'm done with that talk. You may take a look eventually. Yet he knows the secret. I, I. Well, he knows as much as I have been willing to tell him, mm. which is a lot. I only awoke but a week ago. Imagine being in complete darkness, only to wake up with skin and a fresh set of hair. Well, I mean, not completely skin. I fear found that the tomb brings life and death. It is a book of concoctions, for one I have taken great effect to use. There is a reason since Sima is breathing. Maybe you will find it useful for your dead dragonborn friend. Nah, I think he's happy being dead. But, you know, I do appreciate you being so courteous in passing this time over. Well, Wrath said you would come looking. Seems like a nice fella. He was silent, and the moment he started to talk, I knew he was not good. Mm. Did he say anything else about me? He said a few things about, well, your group. Mm. There is one. That is not him that I recognize being cursed by him. If your friend is hallucinating, looking like a bone, that is one of the darker effects Wrath talks. Oh wait, is Wrath the uh, the skelly dude? Big old, he like rides a bat. Skelly dude. He like... One of my siblings, yes. Yeah. Riding something like... He had wings before. He mm, just but flew. now he now he rides a bat. I suppose, I suppose if he yes, yes. Yeah. If he did not have wings, he would have to find some way to fly. Normally, he would only be flying up. What um? What happens? It like 
hypothetically, say we killed him, what, like, is he gonna come back? So I will find it very unlikely that you manage to kill the messenger of death. Mm. Good, because we didn't do that. If you removed his mortal form, yeah. he would remain a spirit until the great Mother Marta decided to re-embody him mm. or some other part of the group he has now joined, uh, a coven. Yeah, big old, big old witch and the like. Some mother of sorrow. Mm. I think he said it was like a monkey. Maybe I'm remembering rock. Not <laughs> the darkest <laughs> name used for. So you're saying it's the mother of sorrow. That's her name? Each of us. Well, asleep under her wake. Each of us appear differently, so I assume with your friend's curse, you met it. It is by far worst at first impressions. We are the outsiders. We are omens of death of the great mother martyr. And this uh is mother of martyr. Dumb name. But um what she what she do? She sleeps. That is. And when all of the Titans disappeared, yeah. she told us to wake up. Mm. And the Titans disappeared like what? Three hundred years ago? Years ago. Oh, just putting the pieces together in my old mahogany. Um. Well, she said that we were the gaps the titans left. Mm. We were the fillers. And you're realizing some of the pieces on, on the floor look much, much older than the book that you were given. Like a lot of these scattered pieces, some of them look like sketch diagrams, others look like, I don't know, some old text. Uh, None of it's in, in book bindings, and there are no book bindings around here. There are seemingly just an array of other scattered pieces of paper. And the, um, the, the Curse of Wrath. How do we get rid of that one? Well, he hasn't been able to fly for centuries, but his wrath is a feeling that is mimicked by Ion's land. Wrath gains power from areas unstable. So like go volcanic to... or tectonic shifts mm. are the wrathful feelings of the land, natural but plagued by wrath. The ones that he finds easiest to emerge from. Yeah. That he has not been able to fly for centuries, so catching some sort of flying object would make his job much like it was before. Like, how do we, like, so, you know, you mentioned the curse. How would we get rid of that curse? <laughs> well. Doesn't have anything to do with that, like, shade extract or something? And he actually looks down to the edge of the room where you can see there are barrels seem to seem to have looked up, hooked up to this whole thing. Well, the, the liquid down here is not meant for consumption. Oh, right, right, right. But it does serve as a extension on death, preserving flesh with its oily substance. So like embalming fluid. Well, if Wrath has inflicted a curse on one of you, it might be possible for me to cure Wrath from their mind. Oh, that's... That's curing them of their... It has to be you. There are few siblings willing to help those inflicted by others. Mm. 
But he did say that you would come. And I was not prepared for a midnight incursion. He looks to the ceiling where you can see areas are like indented, like this whole area kind of underlies an unstable level of support. Mm, yeah, well, look, I would have come later, but I didn't want it, so I came now. Well, with my new abilities, I am stretching my knowledge. Limits must be broken. Mm. How often do you find that you dream? Oh, golly. Have you ever had the same dream? Um, dreaming, not too much. Try not to sleep. Just sort of like cultural thing. Uh, <laughs> I do not believe you, but I have found myself in the same dream for over a century. Oh, yeah. What's your dream look like? What it do looks you dream like... of? But when I finally woke, mm. dapper and whole, with new abilities, new ideas, new inspirations, I would tell you, but it would be easier, and he gestures to the inside of the room, for me to show. Yeah. Why don't you bring your friend down here? Mm. I'm sure. Something like hook us into a machine and plate our heads a little. <sighs> I'm sure I can remove that from your mind. Let it be known that I am one of the nicer siblings you can uh, meet. I can, I can tell. You seem very courteous Accommodating. and uh, welcoming. Um, sure, yeah. Look, I'll go upstairs. I'll grab my friend. We can have a nice big old chat. Uh, sure. Uh, and Melion, when you're talking with Madame Gourmand, at some point... She notices that Cornell's been missing, mm -hmm. and instead of uh, this is that whole distracting point, instead of doing something natural, she instead walks, like the moment you're having a conversation then she looks there, she doesn't see him, she turns away from you, turns and walks to the front doorway of the church. Ma'am, where are you? Oh. You hear... <laughs> You walk to the front door. You literally hear also now that like Cornell went down the stairs. You're hearing something like just just so quietly it's under the ground. Yeah, I just casually walk to the front door. She's not there. Uh, it seems barred from the inside. Just lift it. Go back. If it's ball from the inside, she's still inside. Yeah, it's a little weird. I'm gonna pick up my or she, my bar or she like the front door. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna stop looking around for you exits. Got, you grab my also side. Secret nose. You grab yeah. my side. No, you just laid all of your weapons on that. No way of holding it. My scythe is on your butt. Okay. Fuck. Let's <laughs> come back. Does it have a strap on it? Yeah. I'll try it Go. So, so as you walk back around, uh, it's, like a, it's like a half side. You can hear her. She's around this corner here, and she's just panting heavily. She's running circles. I go around <laughs> to see her. I'm like, ma'am, are you alright? Her back is to the wall. She looks at you like she does not recognize you at, at all. Okay. It's time, it's time to leave. It's time to leave. You must go. You must the leave now. Lock the door. You must leave. I can't leave. Okay. I ask of you, please. Head away. All right, I'm leaving. I go upstairs. Let's go. Let's go around. <laughs> I just, I walk to the front door. I lift it off, and then put it softly back down, and then silently begin walking around the other side. You can hear a hyperventilated breathing. Uh, like, just she doesn't move. She's now just. 
Doc, what do you do? Uh, yeah, just silently walk around. Go back to where the crown was. I'll peek around the corner just in case she's moved out, but I think still here. Actually, she's moved like to the up opposite corner where you exited from. She's like intentionally trying to. You can see like the side of her hair, and it is bunned up. But she is like intentionally now ev evading contact from you. I'll pick up the crown and I'll put it on. Okay, it's heavy. It's heavy. It has some inner lining of a type of material. Oh. Yeah, the top half is probably the most interesting. Like all of it's it's four braces of, of uh, silver that come together, and then at the top there is a serpent-like spiral with like a almost like a coiled serpent at the top. Very small. Normal head size, yeah. In fact, it seems to almost fit an elegant thin head more than a uh, big head. Hey, turn around and see Connell. I don't think you see Cornell. Oh, oh yes, no, he does. Yeah, I'm climbing back. Yeah, you climb back up. <laughs> That's right. It's fucked. Yeah, it's it's for her. It's fucked. You want it? We can get it. You know how Albert's head disappeared? Uh huh. Yeah, it's down there. Wow. And he's alive. That's horrible. But just the head. So you get what you I do have the book, but also um, an omen of death is down there and he wants to talk to you. Oh, what the hell? Uh, he, apparently you're seeing skeletons. No, not really. Well, you see yourself I as am a skeleton. skeleton. Yeah. yeah, he says you can fix it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> meet him, man. Uh, but before you do, uh, yeah, so Hildervane is 300 years old, and he's alive now, and he's also a skeleton, kind of like the dude that we fought. Apparently, they're related. And the um, mother of sorrow is the big old witch chick from your dream. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of bad that I'm. Also, Albert's like that's his, save me. That's his brother. Yeah. Okay. His name was Rat. Rat. Yeah. And uh, this guy's name is the Consiler of Death. Real inviting name. I guess. So. Well, let's go talk to him then. Yeah, sure. Sure. You see the book he's holding? It is like, it is. it just looks like an alchemist's book. Like there is visible like is acid burn the, marks, scuffs marks. I don't know. They gave it to me. You look at the inside, it's just blank. Apparently it's all blank Rath, pages. Rath came and was like, they're going to ask for a book. And so he showed this one, and I was like, okay, give me. And he like, gave it to me. So Cornell walks to the edge of the stairs. Hey, come on. There's something seriously wrong with this region. Oh, yeah, no, I know. It ain't that bad where I come from. Neither. Chase. I would take. Murder beasts any day. So who descends first? I'll go back down first. Okay. It's down this way. Also, here's your stuff. Really heavy. Oh, thank you. It's so light. It's just around my shoulders. You hear from downstairs, Well, I prefer long swords. And you're like, and you're like, do you? There is a hint of recognition. Um, uh, you can't help but like itch your neck. Where you remember someone talked some shit about elves and then psychically made you think you were bleeding out of your own neck as Viper died. Uh, and it was a ghost. Uh, Welcome, where? And you're like, you. Yeah, I also think this is the same guy that was like, you know how we saw the tomb that he was from. Yeah, and then I also heard whispering, and I was like, the secret of death, or whatever. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the same guy. Okay, well, hello. This oh. is my friend. I'm dead person. You look at a uh, very dapper looking, uh, almost well-built, dark, uh, lightly skin complexion that would have been like a light brown, but is instead heavily grayed with that kind of black of a brown gray decay to it. Uh, a bone mask, like a doctor's mask, long and pronounced beak that is just made of bone strapped to the top of his head with some back straps. And you see the, the horrifying bowl and what is in the bowl, a large, 
like a uh, ceramic bowl is a is a green head with many green tentacles that look to be tubes or different from tubes, you're not sure, that emerge and go underneath the table and around the table. Little distant pumping sounds or, hi yeah, or hisses of pistons or something. It's something Calmer. mechanical is working inside of this room. <gasps> he recky looks at you and looks at you and looks at you and looks back to his, his book in his hand. You hear him say, uh, the, like fire, the fire, the like fire, the five, the five, oh, they don't see, they are my servant. He's trying to say something. You. I don't want other books. Oh no, I didn't really ask. Do you have case in Zimmer? Do you need help? Oh, please, please. Should I kill you? Well, that would be very inconsiderate. Settle down, Albert. You... You see, he, like, he looks at you kind of pleadingly. But I don't think he's pleading you to kill him. He's trying to tell you something. Listen, I just don't understand what you're saying. Because you're crazy. Yeah. Uh, the boat! The papers! Uh, they arrived! My... A boat? From where? Yeah. There's probably a boat that came uh, on top, you see, on top of the table, it's been put down, there is a sheathed sword that looks old, and it was on the body of Sinsima before he disappeared, and not only the head remained. Uh, sitting nicely sheathed, but definitely covered in a layer of blood. Man looks to be mid-40s, black yeah. hair. Uh, the uh, healer vein, where he wants you to go into that little machine over there. Apparently he'll cure you. No. <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, you. Hello, sir. I've. I see. You have met Wrath. That the skeleton guy. You. Guy you look. Bat. You look at him, and you see a face of yeah. skin, and then you see he holds down a part of his sleeve, and you can see where there is a gloved hand. There is a level of his arm that is just bone. If you would hope not, we are called the Outsiders. We do not welcome people in. He doesn't glare at you. There's, there's, there's bone covering your, your eyes from his face. The brother really pulled a fast one on me. Well, he did the same on me by giving me that head. If I said I wanted heads, he gave me one free of charge and with information that you would be coming. Is there a doctor in the town? This town does not have a doctor. They are all sick, and I cure them of mourning what is dead, what is dying. What a nice guy. The only way people can move on, except for your kind. The like, elves have no consideration of death. He doesn't like elves. Yeah, was that you in the tower when you stabbed me with a fake knife? That really hurt. Was I? No worry. You sound the same. Wait, are you the moon? Oh, never mind. That's just right. That's, I'm being silly. Clearly, he's not a moon. <laughs> It's very likely this came to Alice! Alice! Sorry, could you say that one more time? Oh yeah, what came through and grabbed Alice? I'm really curious. <laughs> he looks like... Oh like... right, your wife. Yep. I forget sometimes. So many names. We got her shoe. Yeah, I brought her boot. Would you like it back? He looks at you just... Yeah, I'll put it next to The freak out has not ended. <laughs> you just put the, the boot on the table. Okay. I brought it to, to show uh, Ed, Edwina. Is she dead? Edwina. But she's not here. Or dead. Look, uh, skeleton person. Actually, you know, um, um, I don't mean to be offensive, but I don't trust you to fix whatever's wrong with me. Um, That's what I told 
Well, I'm good at breaking what needs to be broken and reviving what needs to be alive. I think what you've done is it's in order to them down. And, uh, <laughs> I think you should let him go, really, honestly. Well, the last time I tried to let something go. I'm mean, gonna guess he was with the sculptor and then he ran away. It was. It was. Gourmont. Oh no, it's the chick upstairs. She has helped keep the books in order while the father has departed, but when she wasn't given the spare keys to this cellar, she did not want any, she did what any stuck and curious woman of her age would do. The sound of Sinsima and the smell of wine must have gotten to her. Yep, that's what that was. She liked to dance. It helped her more. Mm. I am afraid this time I have really broken her. I do not often make mistakes. Is that the other head? Why do you need that? Is that the like the father that she was warning? They were like, here I'll bring her back for you. So you can say your goodbyes. I'm sorry, am I being rude? Do you know anything about the flying heads that are from the door one? Like you bring your siblings and all these while you can find it. I'm telling one of you, right? I liked it. <sighs> Intriguing. You are more useful than I've realized. The, thank you, I always try. Pretty sure that means he wants your head now. So, the flying hands are not connected to you. In the metal piece. Mm. This is all a cause of something to do with the lake in the center. It has to do with the boundaries, tectonic in nature. My sibling, Wrath, could easily have something to do with it. But it is unlikely since he likes the more polar temperatures, hotter that or colder. Yeah. You need to explain things to me. I'm going to ask. Sorry. I know what like. <laughs> Barrel! Barrel! <laughs> White ball house. Barrel? Uh, there's like a liquid in the barrel. Okay. Uh, in the corner. Please. Special yeah. about it? Uh, apparently it's a liquid that can have, like, it's the thing pumping into him. It's the same uh, extract, I believe, that we found on that little piece of paper with the jumbled words. It's the same one. I think so. That. Save the alcohol. Save the alcohol. I'm gonna go make sure that the dog. My dog. His side of the bard cage, and the lock appears to be on the inside, not the outside. Where'd you put the other head? Is it right there? Oh, there you go. Where's the machine? What's going to do? And but all of the machines connected to the heads appear to be leading to this machine, which is different from the one that. Well, connected to the barrels, they're all connected to the barrels. It does seem to be more correlated to. Human, if it's not human. A uh, Captain Sidebar. Is it fucked? Okay, Sidebar. 
Sidebar. I don't realize that. Okay. This is going to be a real easy to explain. Rock. Oh, I, look. As long as we're right. I think maybe we should take like an extra three hours just to try and figure out how to tell him. I think that'd be. I don't think we need three hours. Oh, good. Okay. But yeah, there's like some big picture stuff going on. And I really do not feel I comfortable trying to deal with this. Kind of yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like, let's be honest, the book of the place, what you want, is the last one we're going to find. Let's be real. Yeah, probably. <sighs> Alright, Mr. What was it? Something like that. Consiler of Death. Consiler of Death. Well, uh, Do you give yourself that name or? Many different creatures looking for those books. Mm. And yet we just keep finding them in random places. Yeah, but that's because like I'm good at this thing. Yep, it is. Where did you find the books? Where did we find the books? We just were walking around. Yeah, just in different like buildings. Well, how many did you find? I think we got like three. <laughs> we just need two more. <laughs> Look at us go. Uh, did, you, uh, did you figure out how to? Did you figure out any of us in the craziness when you were doing that thing, Bill? Really? What's gonna happen when we find all the books? I'm gonna like summon your star mother. <gasps> You see, uh, this whole time, Sinsima has barely been able to talk, and he goes, Sinsima, speak. And his head rolls to the side as his jaw, I saw it from abroad, from across the sea, to near for it. Life, the pearl, the pearl, the white born house. They tried to dispose of it once. It could not be uprooted. Hmm. A pearl in the white boy house? I, I only got from Radka. You see, he puts his hand on Sinsima's head in a, in a kind of calm, stroking way. I have seen so much. More than I could ever see in life. More than I can explain. But what use is it? I am a monster. I just wanted to find the truth. I mean, we could like... Alice. <laughs> and you see, the man takes his head away and he just starts to... <laughs> I'm sure we could like get Grok to make you like a suit of armor and we can like use that to walk around. Why are you doing this to him? I have pulled information. This one dove into tomes hidden by people that were very aware of I am just like you. Seekers of truth. Seekers. This is not evil. He points to Sinsima. Rat. He points to the book in your hand. This Holds greater evil than you can understand. He understands. Oh, I'm just paraphrasing here. Book evil, raising someone against their will to be alive after death and in this horrible state. We Not evil. Had information I had to extract from Sinsima's frontal cortex. Mm. Okay, so you got your information. Can you let them know it? He tilts his head down at a kind of sad angle. Well, Wait. death's release is his only way out. And, well, his usefulness has not ended yet. But, with your help, what can you offer that he has not already given me? What are we offering for? For what is really in that book. Mm. The key to the puzzle. 
I mean, look, I don't. We don't really need this book that much. You can have it back. It's an empty book, isn't it? Yeah, it's all like blank. I intended to take it to the professor now. Oh, that's the worst. He would have known what to, how to keep it safe. Unless it can't, unless it can't be destroyed. Oh, sweet ass. Why don't we just take it to the professor to the worst key? He'll know what to do with it. Unless it can't be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Why am I having dreams about your brother and his mother? Total, total conversation. Yeah. All right. Why, why are we getting drawn into this? I don't want to be no star. Yeah. Just and I sure as hell ain't lost. Dreams, visions. I don't believe them. Forever. It is old, not that old. It's the beginning of the book you hold. It describes a sect. Sect? The T? Religious fanatics. Like a cult. Except they were not fanatics before the reverie. For the Bronte sisters, Gonte sisters, started to have visions. And, uh, what am I feeling? Like right this book? Yeah, I think so. No. Why, why do I feel like we know the Bronte last name? Gonte. Gonte. Why do I feel like we know the last name Gonte? Probably coincidence. I don't know. Don a what it Well all will be revealed once I deem myself unworthy of that tomb. You have to deem yourself unworthy. And then can like anyone read it? I have no idea. For when I awoke with my new body, yeah. it was beside me. Oh wait, hold on. Why don't you try and read it? You got the same body, right? Still the same body. Damn. That was worth a shot. Yeah, touch the paper. Uh, you feel something. It feels like veins. Like if skin has uh, large jutting veins. Are these made out of human skin? Though you, it looks, it looks very pale. It's skin. Why are you licking it's skin. paper? What? What do you mean it's skin? Probably human. Ugh, gross. Buddy, you're not helping yourself here. What's the purpose of your species? <laughs> and why did the, why did the why do I? exist? Apparently it was to like protect and stuff. Oh, here we go. Secure the souls for the past three hundred years. But with wrath was neglecting it. With so much death here, I have not been able to celebrate the rest of the world's death. So much death in one place. You see his voice starts to change the moment he starts to talk about death like it's a Domino? Alone. 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 Wrath has made my job here like being a bone in mud. Okay. So you're like a like a grim reaper. Like a shepherd. That yeah. was his job too. Mm. And then he started to talk. Also, talk. I have always talk. had speech. Apparently, Wrath got tainted by the sorrow mother. 
Okay, so you're the embodiment of Death's wings. Why are you in a basement in a church? Pool? That is because... That was actually a reason. Well, I was not expecting that. My siblings are a fickle group. But the ones that sought information sought me out. Because you can talk to me. My innate understanding. But what I had from them was very little. The Titans had all vanished, but around that same time, the biggest effect had to do with the depression of magic on Domino. The elves were once held in high esteem because of an artifact they held that tamed the corruption of flora in all of Pharaoh. But as centuries passed, we found that the darkness from the Western lands smothered the humans and corrupted the orcs alike. We have lost much of their fertile land and my siblings believe it was because of the theft of the relic of true power. We were not supposed to be here, or maybe not this many of us, but we are so as, as a equivalent weight to that lost relic, or to the Titans, we are not sure. Who sent you here? A mother, that is the same. Oh yeah, there's a mother of martyr, and there's like the mother of sorrow, so she's a different one. It's a mother of sorrow, awoken wrath, mm -hmm. his wrath. How many of you are there? Fear, in Kula? Oh, no, like in, in, the, in the world. Yes. On all of our How many siblings? There were only three that awoke three centuries ago. When the first Titans vanished, we thought we were the balance, but it was the decay of the land and fertility that happened quickly because of a relic lost by the elves that more of us were found. So it's your fault. <laughs> My job was to break the limits, they keep, stretch understanding. Keep talking about limit break and stuff. You see, yeah, actually, as a surprise too one of the things that is better well hidden and from behind his vestments you see him reach behind his hand and pull out like a classic flintlock pistol that he just puts on top of the table harness and all just pulls out a fucking gun <laughs> he just pulls out a gun now we're doing aggressive to break the limits yeah shit you have to trust now I'm speaking your language well. <laughs> He does make a good point. Uh, why do you have why do you have a fire out? What is what is the purpose of that for you? How do that? You have any visitors out here? That yeah, right. These candles do burn by themselves without my input. Okay. What about the gun? I was here for you as a set target practice. <laughs> No, that's your <laughs> I'm sorry, I just gotta know if that's like some sort of interrogative uh, prop or if you're. This was the weapon I came with. Uh, there is only one bullet. Oh. It's for yourself. Not very useful. Could be for yourself. Why don't you give it a go? I am the conciler of death. I do not die. How fitting would it be if the consoler of that died? No, it would, it would make sense that you came back of everything except for that one bullet from that mm. one gun that you, you bond with. <laughs> <laughs> just for me. Just trying to convince him to commit the whole thing. Like, look, it's so simple and easy. You just put it to your head, pull the trigger. It's not. It's 
I think it is. I, I, you don't want to experience death, I understand. Are you afraid? You seem afraid. <laughs> you like a little bitch. <laughs> There is reasons I have not left this room, and one of the reasons Sinsum's head is with me is it was... I cannot walk to a graveyard recently besieged by the likes of you, and constantly overviewed by the town now, and pull heads and bodies. Oh, sorry, I was just thinking that. No. <laughs> well, okay. So, wait, so you were... So it was, it was I, from the tomb that we found with the like snakes. Can I remember that? What, what's up with that? Yeah, what's the snake? What's, what's up with the snake? <laughs> Why do you have so many things that are you are aware of that I do not know that you knew that now I know? It's kind of hard not to be aware of a bunch of snake people like, going through. I feel like there's the, just fifteen different problems. Like yeah, with this, and none of them will be able. And to we're the TV. only ones it looking into them. Definitely not by us. We killed the postman the other day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds childish. It. When you can just take the heads of the skulls of the graves. I don't know, we took it. We took the head. Yeah. We have a friend that's also obsessed with taking he heads. Really of people. He really lags. He turns them into like little, like he brings them back to life and stuff, and they look around. <laughs> It's quite interesting. <laughs> I think we've seen it. Yeah, we have. No, I've seen it. Yeah. Uh, you are watching the flash right now. It's now when you begin to notice that from his side of the room and from your side of the room, it doesn't appear to be under the debris. It seems to be sifting through the cracks of the floor. Tiny little skeletal bodies oh. of tiny snakes. No, not again. Slither through the, clacks, no. the cracks of the floor and just. But they're all black. They're all sheened in this black mm. tar like oh. liquid. What is up with the snakes? I'm Please a, tell I'm me. I'm assuming Wrath. Well, because Wrath has maggots, so maybe he snakes. Am I right? Do you have influence of the world outside of this room? I have influence. Yes. The snakes are. You just like them. But uh, display the display. What is about to happen? You're gonna kill us. He smiles. I remember getting bitten by those and almost dying. Mm. And <laughs> at the at the first part, you you're looking at like tiny little vertebrates creeping up, but then you're realizing it's like vertebrates of a bunch of dis different spines forming into hands forming into an arm that is separating a piece of tile stone and seems to just be like emerging. So everywhere around you, all of these cracks, all of these stones, natural slabs that gonna... didn't have grooves somehow are getting these like just hands feeding have... up and out. At first you thought they were just little spine vertebrae, but they are, they're little snake spines attached to the fingers where fingers would be. Right. Mr. Kinsala, I really appreciate that you didn't. I would not. Oh, thank you. For day will. With that thing, yeah. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. And he actually looks up. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I'm really. I have far more questions than I ever thought possible. You see, so from the roof, small little uh, pillars of dust begin to sift around your heads onto the floor, but from the roof. Yeah, we should leave. We should leave. Do I have an action? Uh, sort of just like back up, go to the ladder. Like, I oh, look, I see that we, you know, we asked too many questions. I'll pull my gun and fire it in Simmer's head, and then I'll just start to climb up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, he's got a tiny bit of cover, but that's a really inflated head. Like, it's not going to be hard to hit yeah, it. 21. Yeah, you get Damn. that. Says that right now. You saved it. Hey, brother. All right, that's another kill for an innocent being. Okay, yeah, roll me some damage. Nine fire. Okay, you you explode his head, and then you notice that that con you're not sure. It's a concussive blast. That head kind of like hits the back wall, and then you watch most of what is green. Like you're not actually getting a, a good description of what the head exploding looks like, but it's a lot of green that just paints the back wall like a like just throwing a paint bucket. Uh, 
but then you you hear in the moment you eject Sinsuma from many of the tubes that were directly connected to his body. This these many different like hissing sounds, all simultaneously, and then what you also notice. Uh, it appears to be coming through the floor along with what looks like hands and bone hands fully emerging that just go poof onto the top and then you see other things that they have to be centimeters thick to that's okay centimeters thick to be able to make it out through these cracks but you're noticing through the cracks through where the bone hands are coming up this faint blue mist just slowly starts to seep one foot off the ground from where the room you just were in so as you leave, you can make your way up and the, the st- what, what do you do, Malior? Uh, I'm, I'm chasing after him as he leaves. I'm just going to turn around and yeah, bro- you. <laughs> Hey, it's lovely to meet you. Uh, it was lovely to meet you. Uh, we'll, we'll look after that book and we'll be back. Uh, uh, okay, time to go. Bang, bang, your, your right ear is just gone. And you, and you hear from your other ear, it like is forced echoed into your brain. I will see you again. And don't fire it next to me, please. And then, I'm sorry. As Cornell is like heading up the stairs, you see behind you, just like from your butt, uh, immense amount of dust. As the 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 this behind Melion all collapses inwards. What that body was, where Sin Simba was, where all of it, poof, the it just and a massive amount of force just rockets you upwards to the room. As you emerge, you notice that the corner of the bookshelf. That is the last piece of where where uh, where the building on this side actually resides. Now everything here is a hole. Oh, great. And can we just look out and see the gods? Yep. None of them actually actively see you. They're all here looking inwards, but you can see horses that have stopped over here. Uh, We gotta run. As you emerge up, you hear you now start to hear callings. But I will dash to the to the statue. But I'll grab the crown and put it in my bag and then we go. Okay, okay. And we'll end here, but Moki and Grok. Okay. It is as you're going down, further down, that you slowly start to hear a scuttling sound. It speeds up. It it quickly gets faster until you notice I'm that uh, no. Moki, except for the sound, that's the only thing that uh, jaunts you, but uh, yeah. the back wall for a second, even in the darkness, dark. for you, you, you see nothing. Uh, but as Grok points it out, there's no ambient light, isn't there? No ambient yeah. light. As Grok points it out, your vision just becomes shaky because at the far side of the hole, of the hole that you stand at, the entire wall is alive. Mm-hmm. Things I see black are, are black scuttling black. upwards. It's like a reverse waterfall, but it's not on your side. It's on the, on the other. It's for us to, uh, run and get out of here. Go! Well, and, and I can't see anything. Where, where am I? Backwards. Did you just see I me so fucking pushing him along. You're pushing him we, will, we will get to the reflex saves next Fire. episode <laughs> up this greasy path. <laughs> Good job, guys. I mean, Grok's sliding, so it's just... Oh, yeah, you're... you're on the gra- it's even harder to slide back up. He's got a penguin. Fall